So we'll get started with first uh, a roll call. Okay. Chair Garitano. Present. Council Member Bertolino. Here. Council Member Brost. Here. Council Member Edens. Here. First, uh, a roll call. Okay. Council Member Barber. Here. Council Member Bertolino. Here. Council Member Brost. Here. Someone on YouTube. Council Member Edens. Sorry about that. Okay. Okay, I'm sorry, Council Member Farmer. Here. Council Member Flashar. Here. Council Member Rambo. Here. Council Member Remy. Here. All council members <clears throat> accounted for. Okay, great. Well, thanks. Uh, we'll get started. The next item uh, is the approval of the minutes from the December 1st meeting. Is there a motion to approve the minutes? Made by council member Eden, seconded by council member Flasher. Uh, sorry, council member Farmer, I saw your hand go up as well, but so Flasher's kind of beat you to it there. So uh, we have a motion made to approve the minutes. Are there any comments regarding the minutes before we move forward? All right, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any oppose? Any abstain? All right, the minutes are approved. Okay, next item is pertaining to public participation. Uh, I am aware, I know that we have some folks that are here uh, to uh, express some comment pertaining to one of the agenda items. So if you do wish to speak, this would be the time to do so in public participation. And what uh, I would ask is if you can use the raise hand feature um, on Zoom, or if that is for some reason not working, indicate so in the chat. And if you could do that, then we'll be able to call on you and give you an opportunity to <clears throat> and share your thoughts. So at this point, I think I do see one hand up uh, by Mr. Leaker, and then we'll come back and check if there are any additional comments. So uh, Julian, I guess you will uh, proceed with the, uh, do we have, we have no Julian. You have. Oh, uh, no, you got Rick. Julian. We have Rick. All but right. I, I have uh, unmuted uh, Mr. Laker, so he is available to talk. So, Mr. Laker, are you uh, able to go ahead and speak? Yeah, I thought the conversation in the beginning was uh, quite humorous. Uh, going back to the high school picture, that was nice. <laughs> I wish I knew that somebody else was on the line. Now I'm embarrassed. <laughs> Oh, oh, don't be, don't be. Uh, my year of graduation is not quite as old as yours. It's 78, so. But Thanks, you look for, good for, your Thanks age. for rubbing that in, Mr. Leaker. I appreciate uh -huh. that. <laughs> no, you look good for your age. You really do. <laughs> Thank you. Anyways, uh, I have been a Wildwood resident for approximately 30 some odd years. Uh, I have lived roughly anywhere from uh, the Meadows to the Nantucket, and now I'm currently in Vintage Grove on Old State, virtually at Ridge Road. So uh, if you have any questions about someone who knows this intersection better than probably a lot of you, uh, please ask me. I can help you. Uh, and I'll be honest, uh, you can ask a lot of the council members. They know me. The mayor knows me. Uh, I shoot straight. I don't give a lot of BS. That being said, um, the, the need for something at that intersection is huge. Uh, I know that it's in the city of Ellisville. Believe me, uh, I know that very well because the sign that says, welcome to the city of Wildwood is right at, the, uh, at that intersection also and is uh, at the start of our subdivision. So our subdivision is right on the border of Wildwood and Ellisville. We are in Wildwood. Uh, Old State Road has become a very busy area. Um, one of the things uh, I think that you guys are trying to do is to put this walkway in between uh, like the enclaves and all the way up to our subdivision, which I think is very nice. It's uh, something that we need a lot 
because it's not safe to walk on Old State. Be that all being said, there's two intersections that really do need a lot of help. And one is Ridge and Old State and the other is Old Spur and Old State. If it were totally up to me, I'd say, do the whole ball of wax that was talked about three, four years ago. I know nowadays with the COVID and all that, money is tighter and you know priorities are changing and so forth. But I don't want you to think that just because this is theoretically in the city of Ellisville, that it doesn't benefit Wildwood residents because it does benefit them a lot. Um, they would probably, I, if I had to guess, I'd say it's 60 to 70% Wildwood residents are in that intersection at most times. And I just, there's been lines of traffic backed up just trying to get a left turn or whatever. A roundabout is going to help. Um, and that's what we need. We need some help there. I think it's also would be a little bit foolhardy to not try to uh, look at doing this, especially if you can get Ellisville to put in 50% of the 20% share. Um, it, it just, to me, makes common sense. So that I guess that's about all I had. Any questions or anything else? Anything for Mr. Leaker? All right, thank you, Mr. Leaker. All right. Thank um, you. We will then move on to the next speaker. And again, I apologize if we're not following any specific order here. I'm just kind of reading down the list here. Um, I see on the list, Mr. Tim Cran, uh, you'd like to speak? Right, Tim, I've unmuted you, so you should be able to speak. Uh, I can't, uh, am I muted or am I speaking? I can hear you. Uh, my name's Tim Cran. I live in Crown Point Estates. Uh, we moved in in 2000, so we've lived here for about 20 years. So I've gone through that intersection quite a bit. Um, I like the proposals that came out in 2017, the two different uh, improvement plans. Uh, we went through that and voted, not really voted, but expressed a uh, preference for one over the other. Um, and I realize that is a huge, huge undertaking, you know, all the way to improve Old State Road from Pierside Lane all the way out to Old uh, Fairway Drive, um, which would be wonderful. I still support that. But at a minimum, uh, the improvement, you know, just from um, Pierside to Ridge Road. Uh, as you know, that's the area where it, is, it goes from four lanes down to two, and there are no sidewalks there. So I would like to see that be the next section that gets improved um, from Pierside, you know, down to Ridge Road with a roundabout there. Uh, obviously, what the previous gentleman just talked about, the traffic there with the school, uh, buses, there's just a lot of, it, it gets backed up on Old State quite a bit, uh, many times all the way back to that traffic light where it goes down from four lanes to two. Um, but I would think if uh, it were that four lane were taken all the way up to Ridge Road where the roundabout was put in. And then mo more importantly, or not more importantly, just as important is the sidewalks. Uh, that's a section where it's very narrow. If you go through there any time of the day, you'll see either people walking or biking through that section. Um, especially since they've improved um, what I call Zombie Road, Wallifer Road. There's still a lot of bike traffic that comes up that through that intersection and then heads out towards Manchester. It's very narrow right there. And if you go look at it, uh, you'll see the grass is actually trampled down now uh, through that section for people to bike and walk through there. So there's obviously a need for safety to have the sidewalks there. So I'd just like to express my uh, uh, support of one, the roundabout, two, the sidewalks back to Pierside, and if at all possible, the full that we talked about back in 2017. 
Um, so I appreciate your time and would appreciate your support in presenting this to Ellisville, the state, Wildwood, uh, to get the funding to uh, keep that on there. And I think, you know, if we don't, it's going to lose any traction at all with Ellisville on the state. So I think it's very important to, to get it on their list. So thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Cran. All right, next, uh, I see here, Sean. All right, can you, can you guys hear me? Yes. All right. Yes. Um, not to, uh, you know, uh, Tim, I'm actually a resident of Crown Point Estates also. And, and as I wanted to talk about the roundabout, the big focus area for me and my family is you know, my daughter just graduated from Eureka. All our kids feed to Eureka and they all have to make a left hand turn in the morning. And often the only way you can get out of that intersection is to have another car stop, which just again creates that traffic backup. Um, you know, we've, we've lived here in Eureka for uh, since 24, or in uh, Wildwood since 2014. You know, and uh, I've got a son now who's at Eureka and he'll be driving next year. And, you know, we have a lot of families that just make a right and go all the way around just for safety's sake for their kids. Um, so obviously when the roundabout idea was first proposed, I was, I was a big proponent. I know that there's a lot of financial considerations, but, you know, I just, again, wanted to voice my support and, you know, something has to be done there to improve the safety, especially for the, for the kids to travel every day. Thank you. Thank you, Sean. All right. Next on the uh, list here, I see uh, Jared Frank. Can you guys hear me? Yes. yes. Let's stick with this Crown Point Estates theme since it's uh, going so well. Uh, I too am a resident of Crown Point Estates. I've uh, been here almost seven years. Uh, lived in Wildwood since 1988 at Strecker and Clayton. So seen a lot of lot of changes in Wildwood. And uh, you know, the, all the previous gentlemen stated very well, so no reason to, to continue to harp on those thoughts. I just wanted to add a few of my own. Um, I know that some of these decisions can often be data driven. Uh, I hear that a lot of, you know, what's the data say? What Have there been accidents? Have they been fatal? You know, when it comes to that, that should be consideration. I will tell you that a lot of the residents, including myself, we like being a Wildwood because we consider our leaders to be proactive, not reactive. Um, so I would hope that discussions would be come about at this time before there is that, that nasty accident. Um, we really hope that the kids traveling down to Eureka, families making a left, getting onto 109. There's a lot of dangerous spots in those areas already. Uh, it, it would be nice to have a nice, safe intersection there, so close to home, um, you know, to to make that left. The um, you know the the only other thing I'll add is we often you know in, in this corner of Wildwood feel like we're a little bit annexed. You know, everyone has to go through Ellisville to get to us. Um, so it would really be nice to, uh, to have some good discussions, give us a nice improvement. Um, you know, we see a lot at 109. We see a lot at Town Center, a lot through the enclaves of Cherry Hills. Um, I think it would be a really nice, uh, warm feeling to know that, uh, that you guys are all looking out for us, uh, you know, in this little corner of, of, of Ward 8. So uh, that being said, I really do appreciate everything you guys do. I see some new faces on, uh, on this board and on the council. Just want to reiterate, this is not a new fight. Um, you know, we've been battling this for several years. So I really do appreciate you guys uh, reconsidering this. And uh, please, uh, if there's anything we can do for you, let us know. Thank you. Thank you. I, I do have, uh, let's see, another hand up, Mr. Uh, Raul Ortega. Good evening, everyone. I'm also uh, at, at Crown Point Estates and kind of echo what my neighbors were, were talking about and, and in particular with the data and, and I'm not sure, <clears throat> you know, and maybe you have and, and I apologize if, if I'm not aware of that, but what 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 studies have been done in particular with the traffic um, and not just going down old state, but I have kids that attend Ridge and I can tell you, um, I'm sure if any of you folks um, drive around that time when school gets out, the, the, the traffic at Ridge and Old State, in particular heading down towards Ridge, it, it could be problematic. And, and, and just like my neighbor before me stated about being proactive, um, that is not anything that we want to spot, you know, highlight and get a negative um, view of our neighborhood and, 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 and our community. 
uh, simply because we weren't proactive with getting ahead of it. Uh, so I can tell you that, that, you know, a lot of concerns myself with, you know, with kids that are, my kids are Orange Ridge and they eventually went up going down to LaSalle and up going down to Eureka and then that left hand turn there just becomes a problem. But uh, let's just also keep in mind that, that if you were to look at the data coming down Ridge as well, and the folks in particular that are picking up their kids, um, that, that's also something to consider. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, I do see another hand up, Mr. Mike Ritter. All right, so Mr. Ritter should be, where do you go? I do see him, yeah. I, 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 here you go, Mike. Next there you go. Okay, great. Sorry. Uh, yeah, sorry. Um, yeah, my name is Mike Ritter. I, too, am a, uh, a resident of Crown Point Estates. And, um, you know, uh, a lot of the guys before me, um, just to uh, reiterate what they said and maybe just take it a step further in the sense of to, to describe to you of what it's like to drive, um, you know, down Old State uh, when you're approaching Ridge Road. Um I think particularly during those busy times, as Ra Raul just mentioned, um, you know, between the hours of, you know, 7 to 9.30 in the morning and from 4 to 6.30 at night, um, it, there's a, it, it's, it's pretty chaotic in, in the sense of during that time. When you think about um, when people are trying to drive south on Old State Road, stopping at Ridge Road to try to make a left, those trying to make a left-hand turn from Ridge Road on the Old State Road. Um, not to mention when the when the cars are coming north on uh, Old State Road, coming from you know uh, farther down, you know from the enclaves or Cherry Hills, that that area. There's you're, you're traveling at forty to forty five miles an hour, and, and there's a slight hill. And when when you're there trying to make a left, or when you're trying to make a left from Ridge or a left from Old State Road. It's tough because there's a lot that could be going on there from trying to make a left on the ridge, trying to make a left on the old state, cars coming up, uh, going north on old state that may even be trying to make a right hand turn on the ridge and they have to yield. Um, and there's just, a, it, it's just a very busy intersection. And um, again, it, it's been well noted that everyone's idea here is to keep traffic moving. We're not trying to slow traffic down. Therefore, we understand there won't be a stoplight there. We understand there won't be stop signs there. Um, so in, in order to help those people out uh, that have to deal with that intersection every single day, this roundabout is something that certainly should be um, thought of um, and, and certainly you know, talked about uh, to, to a, a, a great degree. Not to mention that the neighborhood right before Crown Point Estates is an Ellisville neighborhood. So um, they, they too are, are, are going to uh, benefit immensely, not, not to mention that the, all the traffic that, that is in and out of um, Ridge Meadows Elementary School on a daily basis. So um, I, I, would, uh, I would just, again, appreciate if you guys would consider that, considering all the different variables that go into that intersection on a daily basis. So. Thank you very much for your time and, and, and for listening. Thank you. All right, I don't see any other hands up. I'll just ask again if there's anyone else. Uh, I do see one hand that came up, uh, Ms. Vicki Pierce. Uh, I think I'm good. Um, we yeah. can hear you. Yep, well, good evening. Um, I am also a member of the Crown Point of Saints neighborhood and uh, I have two children that attend Ridge Meadows, um, and I see the buses have a great deal of, of, of trouble leaving the uh, Ridge Road at Old State intersection to turn left and to turn right. And it does create a, a, a big traffic jam. And also, I, I know Mike touched on it a little bit, but when you are coming up onto Ridge Road, there is a blind spot. If you're trying to turn left or to turn, le uh, turn left off of Ridge Road onto Old State, or you're on Old State trying to turn left onto Ridge Road, there is a blind spot. 
um, that will only get more dangerous as more and more people move to the area and more and more people are, are driving this route. Um, this is this idea of a roundabout is something that I have a great deal of support for um, just going into the future with my children going to dr be driving eventually and um, my husband this is you know we're, we're pretty much in the middle of both interstates of 64 and 44 and it's more it's it's hard to get onto 44 it'd be easier for us to be able to get on 44 with a roundabout but we go we go right and we go all the way down to 141 because of that intersection. So it's a, uh, it would benefit children all the way up to adults with this for safety for this roundabout. Okay, thank you. All right, again, uh, any other folks that wish to speak, uh, if you wanna raise your hand or add in a comment on the chat, uh, you're welcome to do so. Um, I do see a hand raised by Gary. Gary, you should be unmuted. Gary, do we hear, you can speak now. Uh, well, actually I do see it showing as mute. Maybe you have to try to unmute from your end. There you go, there it's good. Hello, gotcha. Yeah. Uh, I'm a, a member of the uh, Crown Point Estates group also, and I'm a member, or actually I'm neighbors with uh, Raul. Uh, and I've lived here about 20 years, and I've seen the traffic really build up going, you know, going down Ridge and, and trying to get out onto Old State is just pretty bad. A lot of times I've, I have basically come to the realization that I stay off of Ridge around nine o'clock in the morning when the school buses and everything are, you know, in the area and people are dropping off their kids and then four o'clock p.m just stay off a ridge completely because uh, it's just uh, pretty chaotic. So anyway, I'm just uh, reiterating pretty much what the previous uh, speakers have said and uh, appreciate your time. Thanks. Thank you. Um, let's see. I do see something in the chat from uh, Meyer. Do you wish to speak? Oh. At Ed and Claire, or, or is that just a comment that you just want to put there? I guess we'd have to add them in, Rick, huh? Oh, just a comment. Okay, that's from Ed and Claire Meyer stating that they agree with their neighbors. This intersection is not safe. All right, any other comments uh, okay. from the public at this time? Okay, I don't see any other hands raised. Um, oh, I do see one hand raised by a Jim. Go ahead. Can you hear me? Yes. Oh, very good. Uh, my name is Jim Vanek. I live in uh, Fairhaven Estates. And uh, that intersection has just kind of always baffled me. We've lived here now for almost 10 years. And uh, it's... It, it's surprising to me that it has been so bad for so long <laughs> and uh, that nothing's been done so far. And uh, it's, uh, it concerns me on a special level. I have a son who you've probably seen uh, biking most likely early in the morning or um, even in the afternoons. Uh, my son's Brock, he's special needs. He's uh, He's a big guy and uh, that intersection, just the whole old state uh, for anybody who rides a bike or uh, it's just a nightmare. Uh, we have, to, uh, I mean, I'm frightened any, every day he goes out the door and goes north on, on old state because he ends up having to cross two or three times in order to get, he works at Boston House on Manchester. He goes to Lifetime Fitness uh, in Ellisville uh, on a, almost a daily basis. And uh, so uh, anything uh, that could be done quickly to improve the situation at uh, Ridge Road uh, would uh, give us a little peace of mind um, for him uh, to be, 
you know, to be able to safely ride his bike uh, to work into places he likes to go. And uh, so Amiel benefit, uh, of course, uh, it benefits uh, the pedestrians, it benefits the bikers, it benefits the uh, the motorists. I mean, there's so, so many benefits to it. I just hope that it's something that can be addressed fairly quickly and, and whatever's decided on that it, uh, the construction can start fairly soon. And that we kind of missed, uh, we got into the meeting a little late. So we, we, we missed kind of the, uh, the pre-log for the, uh, to the, uh, to the, to the meeting. Uh, but, uh, yeah, anything that could be done to help, uh, that ridge intersection would be, um, appreciated by us. Thank you. All right, and bear having the states just uh, for awareness. That's in Ward Seven, off of Old State Road, right there. Yeah, any exactly. other questions, or uh, I mean, any comments at this time? Any other final comments? <coughs> All right, I I don't see any other hands raised. Uh, thank you so much for the comments. It's really nice to see the level of citizen engagement, even in a virtual environment. Uh, to be able to speak, uh, you know, at, during public comment here at the meeting. So thanks for that on behalf of the committee. Um, we'll then now move into our agenda. If, uh, you no, know, hearing that all the comments that were spoken were pertaining to the item on the agenda that is under action, proposed projects for STP federal funding. If there are no objectives, uh, no objections from the committee, I would like to suggest we address that item first, given that we have a uh, large presence of the public here with an interest on that. And therefore they can uh, listen to the discussion. And, um, you know, of course, we're welcome to stay for the duration of the meeting, but if they wish to go, they're also welcome to, to go after that topic is discussed. So, with that, and I do hear a little bit of background noise, Rick. I don't know if you can tell who it is, but you can maybe mute. Um, tell our attendees in the panel side. Okay, oh, so one is Oh, maybe, yeah. Yeah, I think Rick's taking care of it now. Thank you. All right, so um, with that, are there any objections then with that agenda change? Anyone? No. Okay, thank you so much for that. So with that, then we'll move to that item on the public works for action. So we'll have number one, proposed projects for STP federal funding application. Rick, do you wanna go ahead and do the introduction on that? Yeah, absolutely. Um, Councilman Giratano, we obviously spoke last meeting regarding this, this item. Um, so it's back on the agenda as a follow-up and um, hopefully we can make a decision tonight potentially to move forward. I did provide a little more information relative to the discussion at the last meeting. Um, did follow up. I was able to follow up with the uh, city administrator, uh, Bill Schwer with the city of Ellisville. Um, and I was able to confirm based on a conversation or emails with Bill that Ellisville is willing to commit um, to the same degree that they committed financially in 2018, um, the last last time the uh, funding application was submitted. So their commitment at that time was $250,000. And Bill indicated he felt comfortable that they would be willing to also con contribute up to $250,000 um, to, to the project. So essentially what I did is I took that number and provided to you a potential cost breakdown where assuming the city of Wildwood went um, as the project sponsor, um, we would split the local match uh, at 20% and, and given the total project cost of uh, $2.3 million, um, the, the city of Ellisville, the city of Wildwood would each contribute 230,000. So it, it's a little bit less than the match, the, the maximum amount that, uh, that they, had, they had mentioned, but um, that would be certainly one funding approach um, you know, as a joint application, well, excuse me, as an application with Wildwood being the sponsor and then um, Ellisville uh, also on board to help fund it uh, and split the local match. Um, we could certainly fund or propose a higher local match and the, usually the higher that you 
contribute, uh, the, the greater your score is. So the, the odds of success are a little bit greater if you, if you put in a local match at, at a greater rate than 20%, because that is the minimum amount. So that is something to consider as well. Um, in my memo, I also did provide, provide again the information relative to the other projects that were considered uh, last month. Uh, the Route 100 projects, um, the J turns and the left turn lanes are still something that uh, could be considered as well. Uh, so with that, I'll, uh, I'll turn it back to you and I'll certainly address any questions that you might have. Thank you, Rick. Um, and uh, I'll open it up for discussion, but I, I do want to take an opportunity um, given the level of interest I do have on this item here. So again, I want to reiterate thanks to all those that spoke on this. I know having been a representative now for about six years, basically, uh, in this area, this is the top of the concern that I hear from residents in this area. And, and you heard from folks in Crown Point Estates and uh, Mr. Leaker over at Vintage Grove, Fairhaven Estates, uh, so forth. And you know, it comes up every time we have a discussion, when are we gonna do something about this? So naturally, obviously we have this opportunity where we're revisiting this. And so obviously wanna make sure these folks are aware because you know, a key foundational component of our city is citizen engagement, getting them involved to speak on behalf of their issues. And so I am thrilled and glad to see the participation of these folks here tonight and certainly would be able to sleep good at night if they didn't have a chance to share their experiences here for consideration. Now, um, this road here is a very old road. Uh, the history goes back to basically the early 1800s, Old State Road, back to when Ninian Ham Hamilton settled in the area of basically the area where LaSalle uh, is uh, over there. And that road is, the road, Old State Road is documented. It goes back that far. So it's a road that I don't know how much has changed over the years. We know that the component mostly to the Ellisville side was widened several years ago. And in fact, the history of what we've been doing with this is that, you know, back in 2016, 2017, we had a very nice comprehensive plan and a great partnership with the cities of Ellisville as well as St. Louis County, where we were going to do a major project, which included uh, improvement of the old state and ridge intersection, the path, which we have submitted an application separately for are still waiting a response on a shared use path. So it's a separate item. Uh, I know a couple of folks mentioned that. And then, um, hey Joe. Yes, Joe. This is Larry. Yes. Can you wrap up? It seems like we're really drifting here a lot and oh. rambling. So, can you wrap up this? This is really dragging on. All right. I, well, I mean, I I think it's an important issue, but let's stick with the issue and move on. I okay. Think, yeah, I just want to. Uh, yeah, let's 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 move on. You're really, I mean, you're the chair, but that doesn't mean you talk forever. Let's move on. No, I understand that, but all right, I'll get to the point here. We visited this project multiple times. And you know, every time we have either tried to, it's been unsuccessful or not. Last year we had an opportunity. We put it aside to work on a focus on another one. We're back at the table this year. And I think it's important that we listen to the residents because I listen to these residents and I certainly want to do as what they say versus me as I tell them. And it's so important uh, because it does come up this issue. Now, I know there's been concerns about data. I'll quickly cut to the point. The old state road, their intersection, when you look at all the traffic counts by St. Louis County is the second highest traffic count there. Um, also comparing it to town center and MoDOT, you will see that there are intersections that have improvements and those intersections there, um, you know, have less traffic. So I think that's something to be considered. Now I know that there's been a question around data and therefore um, question around maybe accident data. I'm gonna let Mr. Brown speak to that. I do know there are intersections and other locations where there are higher accident issues. But again, we've been working on this for years. I'm gonna to continue to work hard so that we can try to get this addressed. So um, I will now open it up 
for any kind of discussion. Mr. Galani, Council Member Galani. Can you hear me? Yes. Um, yeah, I just I just wanted to um, chime in really quick and as a council member and also a resident of Crown Point Estates, first of all, thank all the residents, uh, fellow residents in my neighborhood for showing up tonight to uh, voice their concerns and be heard. Um, it's a great neighborhood. And, and then I just wanna also reiterate to what they all spoke. Um, I've been here for almost nine years myself in this neighborhood. And I can attest to the fact that this intersection is not only dangerous from a safety component, um, but also more importantly from a traffic volume component. And it, it gets considerably worse year over year with the growth of the population in Eureka. Um, it's actually become a major cut through um, from the 4044 corridor. So if there's an accident on Highway 44, which is a regular event, all that traffic comes north through Old State Road to get to Clarkson and Highway 40 and vice versa. Um, there's, there's a lot of cross traffic coming through there. So it is, it is almost impossible to make a left turn out of there almost all of the time. Um, my daughter and son regularly have games in Eureka and we literally make a right turn out of there and go further down the turnaround and come back the other direction to get to um, you know, continue on old state to 109. So that that is it is a major issue and everything everybody said is 100% spot on accurate. Secondly, I wanna say that, you know, putting a roundabout there will also add a significant safety component to the folks that are trying to um, take a walk, especially this, this past spring and summer and fall when the weather was nice. I regularly took early morning walks and or jogs, most more often walks at my age, but, um, I also took my kids on bike rides um, through there to go to the Old State Ridge intersection and cut across to Vintage um, Grove Court down to Harbor Point and to go over and, and meander along the sidewalks where it's safer. But crossing Old State Road over there is almost a death trap because you know those cars come flying. There's a, there's a big curve right before you get to the ridge uh, intersection coming from uh, Manchester and the, the, the speed of cars is well in excess of the posted speed limit there almost all the time as well. Um, after they pass that pier side light and coming from the other direction, there's not a, a stop sign until all the way down at Fairway or Old Fairway. So um, there is a major safety issue there as well as the volume. So um, as, a, as a fellow council member, I can to that and I just wanna make sure that everybody takes it serious. And, and lastly, I just wanna to touch on the fact that with Ellisville going in on this, has these with us, I would advocate that we go in at least at 25%, if not 30% to try and secure the guarantee of getting that federal funding to get this project done. I don't see any reason to go in at the minimum number of 20 when we're only having to put up half of what we would normally have to put up in a normal situation. The fact that Ellisville's agreed to do that with us is phenomenal. And I think we should make sure we don't let it go to waste. So thank you very much. Okay, uh, Council Member Rambo. Yeah, I'll make this quick. Um, I, um, the traffic congestion concerns come through loud and clear as do the safety concerns. We can talk more about those later. I, what I really wanted to get to was, um, um, and, and I think it's, it, I agree with uh, Council Member Jelani that the um, cost share partners um, makes this um, possibly a, a more attractive project. It's still a whole lot of money though. And um, I, I would like to ask Mr. Brown uh, two questions. Number one, we've seen some, we've seen comprehensive um, uh, quantified safety and accident data for Wildwood as a whole. And I'm, I don't know if that's public or not. Um, so if, if you could answer that question and also um, tell us just a tiny little bit more um, uh, about the weighting criteria. How much does safety, you know, how much is safety weighted? How much is the um, contribution percent for each um, for each participant weighted and so on and so forth? There's probably a formula. You don't have to go through it in detail, but it would be very handy for us to know because I don't think the safety data per se reflects maybe the safety concerns of the residents. And it doesn't, it may or may not um, consider just pure traffic congestion. And so I want to get, um, I want to sort of level set uh, on those questions. 
Um, sure, Council Member. I, I think initially you asked about the uh, crash data that we provide. Yeah, that, yes, that, that safety, that crash data that, you know, 15 pages of graphs and, you know, the reasons for crashes and the maps and so forth. But I'm also asking about the weighting criteria. Sure. Sorry if it wasn't clear. The, the, well, the annual report is put together by the police and it's certainly public information. So, um, and we typically have it linked on our website. Um, so if someone wants a copy, we can make it available, no question there. Great. Um, as far as the, the application, so, when we submit the application, we have to choose, there's several different categories that we have to choose from, um, but we have to essentially say the project meets a specific primary purpose. And one of those purposes would be safety. Another would be essentially traffic congestion. Um, those are the two primary ones. Uh, preservation is the third, I believe. Um, so, when we submit, we're gonna to have to make a decision whether we go for safety or whether we go essentially for congestion. Uh, um, and I, I guess I don't have an answer for you as to at this time, which one we're gonna go for. I, I was leaning towards don't safety. Need it. I can tell that it was a safety primary. Primarily this was a safety project. Um, but the bottom line is you have to be able to justify safety through crashes and yes. it's cost. So yes. they look at the, the, the amount of crashes that would be corrected with the improvement and they sign a, a benefit and look at the cost and you get a, and that's how it's scored essentially is through a benefit cost ratio. Um, the congestion is also important and you heard you know, residents speak towards that. Um, the problem with the, with the congestion side of it, quite frankly, is that um, when we make it easier for folks to leave and, and access Ridge Road, we end up doing that by incurring more delay on Old State Road. So mm. the cumulative effect may not be that there is overall delay reduction, although clearly it will make it easier for residents to get out and access Ridge Road. So submitting it on congestion basis is probably not gonna be a better idea than the safety. Um, so we may have sort of a weak application, no matter which way we go. And uh, that's disappointing to me and probably a lot of the folks on this call. But um, and I'm not asking you to make a firm assessment of that. But it sounds as though we don't have crash data to support the safety uh, concerns. And um, even though it's the second most traveled intersection, uh, whatever um, Chair Garitano said, um, it sounds like it's a really busy place. Um, but it. it um, I don't, it sounds as though you don't think we can justify it on that basis either. Am I hearing you right? My, my sense is that the safety um, need would be, would be the, the most uh, important one in that we don't have, we sure. don't have five years of crash history yet from Ellisville. Oh. We'll have to get that shortly and then we'll have to go through all those crashes and figure out you know, which numbers per year are correctable and then calculate the benefit cost ratio. And it really, it really boils down to what that benefit cost ratio ends up being. Okay, great, thanks very much, appreciate it. All right, I've got a couple more hands up. So let me just make sure I've got you all down. I've got Council Member Edens, Bertolino, Remy and Brost. All right, we'll move with Council Member Edens. I think Dave was right before me and I got my hand up after, but if, if Dave doesn't mind. Um... Dave, are you okay with that? Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, so one, one just general thought, right, is that crash data does not include near misses. That happened in certainly my part of the ward uh, that doesn't account for all the horn blowing, the swerving, or that extra time for, for people taking extra routes. So whatever we get back, let's keep that in mind. So just want to get it out of the way and say that I understand that you need a roundabout. I'm here to support it. Now I want to hammer out the details, which is who pays and who pays what. Uh, Unlike other projects, right, unlike those roundabouts on 109, we don't own the area that this is occurring in, or at least the majority of the land that would be uh, redone to, to incorporate this roundabout. So that automatically makes it different. So if we want to increase the amount of money that we put in, then fine, let's have Ellisville go up to that 250000 they committed. I mean, ideally, and I brought this up at the last meeting, right? amount that we pay will be based on a portion of the amount that we own that is effective. Ergo, whatever that ratio is, Ellisville would end up paying more. 
The other thing that I have an issue with is when we split total cost, that total cost doesn't just include construction, it includes the land acquisition and easements. In other words, Wildwood taxpayers are paying to buy easements for land in Aliceville that we will not own after this, nor do I want to own it. But, but the point is, we are by helping to pay for Aliceville to buy land and to own and maintain in the future. So what I'd also like to see happen is that we are responsible for the easement that we would have to buy. I think it's at least one parcel. Aliceville is responsible for their easements. That's taken out of the total project cost. And then I'd be more amenable to have these because right now I'm, I'm not. Um, uh, you know, the, the other thing too is that, uh, you know, if you're not familiar with my ward, I know we have a lot of attendees, I'm ward two. And so I border Ellisville, I border Clarkson Valley, and I also border Chesterfield. So I wanna make sure we, we get this done for you, but when we do it, I don't wanna make a statement that sets us up in the future for, um, hey, do you have a public safety problem in your community that you should be responsible for? Don't worry if we need a dumb wild little pay for it. I don't ever wanna set that standard going forward. Um, I wanna be a partner of Ellisville, but I don't want us to pay more than we have to. And I'm certainly not okay with contributing towards easements in another city. So I'm not gonna hold it up at committee, but before we would get to a final vote, um, I, that, that would be an issue for me. And so I hope we can go back and reapproach Ellisville. So if we wanna put more money in the pot, I know Michael suggested it, not a bad idea. I'd like that to come from the money that Ellisville already committed, which was 250,000, not the 230 on the table. Because again, this is not a normal matching fund program where we're, it's just us that's matching the money. We now have another city involved that owns most of the land. So that's, that's what I've got. So Rick, is it, is it possible to go back and deduct the easement costs before we split? So that I'm just really dealing with construction. Well, I think Ultimately, this would have to get ironed out between city, uh, the city of Wildwood and Ellisville through an agreement. Um, I think, um, you know, as far as the application goes, again, Ellisville committed two hundred fifty thousand um, uh, dollars. We could bump up the local match and account for the whole two hundred fifty. What I was proposing was two thirty. Um, because it was nice and it was clean and it put us right at 20%. If you actually go to 250, if I did the math right, that's a half million total based on a $2.3 million project is 21.7%. So it doesn't make a huge difference over, you know, for the overall local match. Um, but we could certainly do that. I don't believe I have any reason that I have to round to the nearest, you know, percentage or five percentage points or anything like that. So I could bump it up and we could base it on 250,000 from, yeah. from both, both, both communities if, if, that's what the, if that's what the committee would like to do. Oh, I don't mean from both communities necessarily. I understand the point of increasing the percentage for the application, but then we're still paying the same amount for, for less that we legally are responsible for. Um, and that, that's, that's where my, my hang up is. So n n no. I'm not okay with that. Um, I, guess I would just point out to you again that, quite frankly, Old State Road is a county roadway. So, I mean, we're both paying for easements for the county's roadway, and that would be actually who the easements would would be acquired for. Um, and it wouldn't be for it wouldn't be for Wildwood. It'd be for St. Louis County. But it's but I'm talking about the fact that it's still on the Ellisville border. Those the houses that they would we would get the easement from are in Ellisville. I, I guess I just well, wish some of them would be Ellisville. Some of them right would be Wildwood too. Right. I, I couldn't tell you exactly, but some would be both. Right. Yeah. Okay. Hey Rick, maybe to help with the conversation here, and just a quick uh, point of information. Uh, what is the deadline for you to submit the application just so that we can uh, either determine how much either conversation or if we're going to have to make some kind of decision tonight? The um, submittal date for the application is February 11th. Um, there's a little bit of time um, to still 
wrestle with some of these issues, uh, but but not not a lot of time, quite frankly. I need to put together a resolution if we're going to move forward that has to go to council, and and that would have to be approved by council. There are two committee meet or excuse me, two council meetings between now and February 11th, and I believe you do have one more uh, committee meeting uh, before that time as well. I, and I have one more question, if that's okay with the chair. Yeah, you can go ahead, please. Yeah. So if if there would be any change orders, would that be split based on the 50-50 in the future? All I could commit to you, uh, council member, is that Elsa would would commit no more than 250,000. So I wouldn't expect that they would could contribute towards change order costs. Okay. Now, if, if we went at this with the match that I had recommended to 230, then in theory, we still have $20,000 to put towards those kind of things. So it, it really depends on, on how we approach it. I, I think if we put in 230 for starters and there were change orders, yes, they would, they would probably, I'd like to think that they would contribute up to 250,000 total. I, I guess, so here, here was my thought is if, if they've already committed 250 and we ever offer them a deal that's lower, they have no reason to, to take, to extend more upfront initially. So I would, I would try to say that we still get the, the, the 250 out of them because if they would end up in a tighter budget crunch, they may not have the money for a change order and we still may have it. So we might, we might get the two, the full 250 now, but later we could be alone on the hook for a change order and they could still only contribute to 230 because they may have council members that say this is political and Wildwood has to pony up and we're done. So my thought is get the full 250 now. And then if we have to absorb a change order, we can, but maybe we can have that upfront conversation of if there's a change order, let's split it. I, I'm just afraid that that, that council is gonna say, yeah, you know what, we said 230, you took it, we're done. Yeah, understood. I can certainly I can certainly change the local match to be 250 each if that's if that's what you'd like. No, I mean we continue with 230, they continue with 250. I'm not proposing an even split. And then I'm proposing that if they can't split a future change order that we do, because it, it goes back to the principle of, of, even though it's a share road and it's our residents, they still own a section that, that we don't. You got that, Rick? Because that's something you can talk with them about and see where, you know, what flexibility they have, or do you have some thoughts on that? Well, I'm certainly open to um, following up the dialogue or, uh, with the city of Ellis, but that's not, that's not a problem whatsoever. Um, again, I, I, what I would say is that this would have to get ironed out in an agreement that ultimately would, would stipulate all those details. So it's difficult to get too far into the weeds at this point because um, neither party has really made really formal commitments that are, that are very much detailed beyond you know, talking about the, the maximum amount that they feel they could contribute at this time. So I, I don't know that Bill himself is going to really get too far off uh, on the ledge here. Um, if I start talking too specifically about this and that and what could happen in different scenarios, but uh, I'll be glad to follow up with him. I, I do see, and I'm going to go to Council Member Bertoli, you know, again, we want to keep this moving here, but City Administrator Steve Cross, do you have something quick you want to jump in on? Yes. Um, what I would like to suggest is it sounds like uh, Rick's previous conversations with the city of Ellisville have been with the city administrator. Um, um, so I'm going to get involved so that we're talking city administrator to city administrator. Um, so Rick and I together will give that gentleman a call and um, kind of see where he stands and talk about change orders. And um, because if, if we don't get a firm commitment from them or whatever, then you know, we're, we're spending a lot of time for nothing. So um, I'm going to join Rick uh, in that call um, to the city administrator of Ellisville and, and, uh, and see where things stand. Okay, thank you for doing that. Now hearing that Rick said there is a little bit more time and we do have another admin public works. Maybe we can just focus on maybe what kind of direction we wanna give Rick as far as any further discussions. You know, I was obviously open your uh, open to any uh, opinions as to what it is like council member even said here. So council member Bertolino, do you wanna go next? Yes, thank you. Uh, let's not lose sight. The proposal from the public works was not only for the old state, 
roundabout, but it was also for the J turns and uh, on Route 100 at Pond and T. And it was also for the J turns at a number of locations down 100. Those are very definitely safety hazards. We have safety data that says we've had deaths at uh, those intersections. They, and for years, we have been promising folks on that route that we would make some adjustments and make some changes. And we finally got the state on our side on that and they've done a proposal. Uh, however, uh, by Rick's estimates, the J turns at 100 uh, for T and uh, Route T and Pond Road would be 2.7 million. That would be about a, a half a million dollar, $500,000 match from the city. And the other turns on uh, going down old, uh, 100, those others are estimated about, what do they say, Rick, 240 or two, 2.4 million or something like that. That's another $480,000. So we're looking at over a million dollars in matching on those other two projects. I don't think we can afford to go any higher on our matching on the third project. Although I think we ought to support it. Let's go for it. Uh, let's do it. Uh, but we're, you know, let's not lose sight of we've got two really big projects down 100 that really do have safety implications that are paramount as well as this one with this roundabout in T. And I'm really for this roundabout. I want to see us do it, but I don't think we should put any more money into it. I'd like to make a motion at this point that we um, move the final decision on this to the next meeting. And we ask Rick to go forward with any discussions with Ellisville. Uh, that seems if we can, if we can raise uh, their portion at all and Steve Cross be involved in that. Um, but uh, I am very much in favor of, of adopting the recommendation, but I would be willing to give it one more try with Ellisville see if we can't raise their amounts. That's my motion. So, Dave, I'll second that. I think we should go ahead and uh, have that conversation with Ellisville. So we have a motion on the floor. Any discussion now on the motion regarding postponement? Um, let me see. I've seen Council Member Brost. Yeah, I guess with respect to the <clears throat> discussions with Ellisville, is I think if we're going to go into this, we need to both go into it with no cap. If if we end up, if they're going to say a, a cap of 250, and if we took the same position of 250, then it the project crashes. I, I think we both have to share in any cost overrun or 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 excess whatever. Um, because it is it is common to run into those situations, um, so it, it sounds like we need to go into that uh, as as equal partners. Um, so specifically with respect to the motion, that is that would be a, a comment. And I have other comments, but it's not related to the motion. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you for that. All right, any comments related to the motion, um, Council Member Remy? And just a quick question in regards to the motion. So um, I'm not really in support, I don't think, of delaying this in the respect of pushing it uh, back to the next admin public works meeting, um, only because February 11th as a deadline for a grant is, is coming sooner than, than one might expect. And my only procedural question for the chair is, um, if we wanted to move this forward to council tonight, there's no really nothing stopping us that at the council meeting, Mr. Brown could then present the um, Ellisville uh, dialogue, or sorry, Mr. Cross, the Ellisville dialogue at that time. And therefore it doesn't have to hinge and wait on an admin public works meeting. It could move through council. And we'd have to anyway, have to have had two meetings anyway with that bill to begin with. And so that would afford us the ability, the time to be able to do this, but not have to do it at this meeting, but actually expedite it so that we afford if this, we're going to get successful with this, that we have the most time to write it in that fashion. So I don't support Mr. Bertolino's proposal for that reason, if that makes sense. All right. And you did have a question for the chair. Uh, so uh, I believe Mr. Bertolino's intent, and I'm um, second then that, is that we hash it out in the committee uh, to try, it seems like there's still a lot of questions here. And so the intent, I believe, was to try to get the committee to hash it out so that when it is sent to council, um, it is in a more finalized state. Um, typically, that's what we try to do uh, when, in committee. But um, I did see a hand come up. Mr. City Administrator Steve Cross, you want to say something? Uh, 
Just something real quick. And, and um, I've said this before and I, and I don't want to sound like a broken record, but I just want to remind you all um, that there is a strategic plan process going on right now. So, you know, the discussion that you're having with the committee now is good. <clears throat> I don't know if the strategic plan is going to be discussed at next Monday's council meeting. Um, I had a conversation with the mayor today. It's a pretty full agenda. Uh, and there are other items, uh, including a closed session that he wants to spend time on. So we may not address the strategic plan, specifically the prioritization of the sub goals. Um, but when that all comes to light in terms of what you all as, as council members have decided um, is, is gonna drive whether this project moves forward or not, depending on other priorities. I just wanna remind you that that nothing is in concrete now until that strategic plan um, is put to bed. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank All you, right. Mr. Chair. Um, Council Member Rambo, do you have a comment related to the motion on the floor? Uh, no, I have a, a couple of just general observations for um, um, Mr. Brown before um, before we uh, move on. Okay. Thank you. All right, seeing none, uh, just one question I have for uh, Director Brown. Then hearing that the motion that we have on the floor, I just wanna make sure that are we in a position then if we seeing the number of meetings that we have left and then council, it sounds like then when it goes to council, it would have to have two readings, uh, the approval of the resolution. And again, just uh, also wanna remind everyone, I, I think it's important for the public, this is solely just an application with the East West Gateway of Council of Governments just to seek federal funding. This is no way um, at this point would mean that this project moving forward or anything like that. It would certainly have to get a response from East West Gateway and that wouldn't probably be till 2022. So uh, Rick, my question to you. So just for one, uh, one point to, to clarify, we have to get a resolution passed by city council. So that's a one meeting effort. It's, it's not a two meeting oh, effort. So that does help. You. Yeah. Um, what else What else was your question or what? Uh, no, that's it. Knowing the dates that we have, then it sounds like we can get this to, if the next admin public works committee meeting has this on the agenda, we get the information that you've been asked from tonight as well as if there's any other comments from folks, uh, whether you want to ask them uh, after the meeting with Mr. Brown or or uh, at the meeting here, you know, I believe Rick has now an action item list of things to follow up on to try to see if there's a way we can. Uh, okay, Joe, I think Dan wants to talk. I don't see. Let me see. He's been waving his hand. Mm -hmm. I apologize. I do not see Dan because my screen was not showing him. Thank you for calling him out. He's on the next page. So Dan, go ahead. Yeah, first off, no worries. Um, I'm affected by this roundabout or proposed roundabout big time because of where I live. I drive past this all the time. So I'm in huge support of this as someone who has had to swerve and things like that while driving past Ridge Road because people are stopping suddenly to make a turn or whatever it is. Having said all that, we're talking about the motion right now. I actually support uh, Mr. Remy's proposal of not not pushing this back any longer. Let's, let's start moving this thing forward, get it in front of the council. We can have some debate there. Uh, I, I just think that the time crunch is a concern to me as someone who wants to see this move forward. And I'd like to get it moving in the right direction as fast as possible. Thanks. Okay. So, Ms. Uh, Council Member Edens, you have your hand up. Is this related to the motion on the floor? Uh, yes. I was just going to say that um, my experience as having been on council is sometimes if um, things don't get ironed out in committee first that council just ping pongs it right back which there wouldn't be time to do necessarily so um, as long as there's time to get it in before that grant application since it is a resolution and, and doesn't need two readings I'm just afraid we're going to get there we're going to have a work session and then if council has one one more question there won't be a time to email Ellisville whereas if we get you know that agenda out we still have time to to get questions um, when that work session is public bef before uh, we get to the 11th hour. And I, I just, I just want to make sure that this application gets done. And um, I, I totally get where council member Flasher is coming from. I'm just afraid that it would have the opposite effect than intended. Okay. I'm just worried about that. All right, Mr. Uh, Councilmember Remy, you have your hand up. Is this on the motion? 
It, it is, um, and and uh, I, although I, I'll respectively respectfully disagree with that idea, I think actually the advantage of getting it to council is that we can actually discuss it. We can bring this information to the table, and if in fact it needs to go back to admin public works, we're not actually delaying anything because it would. If we're going to go forth with a proposal next month to see it again, we're not delaying it, but we're, what we're doing is we're actually dialoguing and affording the rest of the council. But I hate to be in a position that at the admin public works meeting in February, and then the first meeting, which is the only meeting that we would have before this, that in fact there may be some um, um, questions or concerns that would actually punt it back to subcommittee or want to delay it at council, you're going to miss your February 11th window. And so by bringing it to council now, you actually would hopefully accelerate the back and forth because now if there was a need to come back to us, it would come to us regardless of what we're doing tonight. But on the other vein, it would afford us one additional city council meeting to talk about it as well. Even if we say, this is our resolution, what sort of questions do we have tonight as a council? Can we postpone for two weeks at the next meeting and then vote on it? And we'd have the answer before the next admin public works meeting and then afford these gentlemen the uh, time um, and ladies to have the time to really develop the strongest proposal that would be able to be put in for success. I, uh, Mr. Ken, uh, Chair, um, I just have one question post um, vote on this proposal. I did have some comments I did want to make um, that I would hope we could suspend Robert's rules to be able to just engage that because if in fact the proposal goes forth that we're going to push this until the next meeting, I think some of those comments would be constructive to be able to have that next meeting beforehand. So I'd hope to have that ability to be able to speak on this issue because I know Mr. Bernalino was speaking before me and I didn't get a chance to speak yet. All right, we can make that motion after this one to Thank you. suspend the rules. All right, uh, again, I uh, comments related to the motion on the floor. I have city uh, interim city administrator, Steve Cross. I just wanted to ask a quick question to Rick. Rick, the February 11th, is that a hard deadline or is there an opportunity to get an extension to that deadline at all? Um, it is a hard deadline. And I, I would add that if I, if I may, I, I would like to say a couple things. It, it does take a fair amount of work to get the application or applications, depending on if we're doing more than one together. So it would be the department's preference that we do make a decision tonight, go to council. So then we, we can spend the following weeks putting, getting the application prepared. I, I, it will be a challenge to do it if we wait until February for a final approval. And we'll have to get everything ready to go and make some assumptions um, and then pull it together over the last few days. I'm not saying we couldn't do it, but it, it certainly would be preferred from our perspective to make a decision tonight and then and then move it forward to council if that's possible. Okay, thank you, Rick. Uh, council Member Bertolino, you had your hand up. Yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, given the discussion, thank you, Dr. Remy, uh, the good points. Uh, I'll withdraw my motion to postpone and uh, do I need to, that doesn't need to go to a vote, it just as uh, I can withdraw it and uh, I assume the second will agree with that? Yes, I agree with you as a second. So the motion is now withdrawn. So we do not have a motion on the table. Council Member Bertolino is assuming yeah. you now want to make a new motion in its place. Yeah, I do. And I'd like to make a motion that we do approve the uh, recommendations from the committee or from the uh, public works and admin public works as presented uh, with the caveat that uh, the discussions with Ellsville continue. Uh, as we previously discussed. Okay, and I would assume that also includes the feedback, uh, like questions that Councilmember Eden's brought to the table here, those part of those discussions with Dallasville. Uh, Absolutely, yeah. All right, I do second that with you, uh, Councilmember Bertolino, um, you know, since uh, we wanna keep that moving forward. So we have a new motion on the floor. Any comments related to this new motion on the floor? So I see Councilmember Edens with a hand up. Anyone else with a hand up? Councilmember Remy. So Councilmember Edens, you're up. Yeah, just quick question I wanna clarify. So because we're approving it as recommended by the department, which is the 230, 230,000, 230,000, that's a 10, 10 split. Does that mean that the department is obligated by the language in the motion to immediately present that to Ellisville as opposed to asking them to, to pay 250,000 and we pay 230,000? Mm -hmm. no, I, I guess that. how are we presenting this once, if we approve the language as is? Because if, if you're Ellisville, well, you're gonna take the 230, why would you? 
Yeah, well, the motion I would say, and, and I would agree with this and maybe Council Bertolino, but the intent of the motion is that it includes any of the uh, editorial comments that have been brought up tonight, such as yours, which you mentioned earlier to Council, uh, to Director Brown. Uh, Councilmember Bertolino, are you in agreement with that as maker of the motion? Yeah, if I was talking to Elsville, I would say the 230 is our ante. And uh, let's negotiate from there. Got it. So Councilmember Edens, is that okay with you? Yep, because that means I can and can support this. So thank you for okay. clarifying the language. Thank you. Councilmember Remy, you're up. Perfect. Well, I will first say that Councilmember Edens can do all of my negotiations anytime. Take um, to them all with you, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> perfect. So I guess I get to talk about exactly what I was hoping to talk about since it's actually relevant to the motion as it is. Um, could I share my screen if that's okay, please? And then uh, Chair, what I would hope to do is I have a couple questions. I have three questions for... Um, for uh, Mr. Brown, and then um, just a couple comments, and I'll try to be as quick as possible. All right, thank you for your consideration. Go ahead, share your screen. Okay, it says disabled. Oh, here we go, hold on. So um, first and foremost, I wanna thank uh, Mr. Frank, Mr. Leaker, Ms. Jim, Sean, Gary, Ms. Pierce Leaker, uh, Ms. Mr. Crahan, Ortega. Um, I think that their comments and all the comments that were submitted, um, oh, I'm still disabled from sharing this. Um, that would be Director Brown. Is that a setting you have to change to allow sharing of the screen to Ms. Councilmember Remy? I'm looking at the settings right now, Mr. Yurko. Okay. Um, you go to security, um, that area right there, and it's just will give it. It's a share screen. You just have to make it checked. In the meantime, while we're waiting, I do see on the uh, Zoom that there are two hands up, Councilmember Rambo, and of course I know C, Councilmember Remy, you're speaking right now. Councilmember Rambo, is that hand up for a reason? You wanna speak or? Yes, uh, yeah, I've got, um, uh, I can, I'll right, hold, hold on, we're gonna come back to you. I just asked a question if your hand is up. <laughs> yes, okay. I'll come back okay. here. Councilmember Remy, are you still waiting on the sharing? I still am. I can talk in the interim while, well, I should say, um, I had the, this has been a really, really good dialogue, I think, for us moving forward. And I think it's going to afford us the opportunity as, uh, as the city administrator Cross had mentioned for us to work on prioritizations, because I think that this, perhaps this example is a great example why moving forward, we're going to have to develop a good triage system between council members and city and, and directly uh, uh, evaluate some of these issues. I'm still waiting for my screen, so I won't try to bloviate for too long. Oh, I'm good. Okay. You should be able to do it, Council Member Remy. Thank you. So um, I did want to show a couple things real fast, and then I have three questions for, for Mr. Brown. So for the public that doesn't understand what we were talking about, this is the annual crash analysis. And this is from 2019, and I was fortunate to go through that. We have it all the way back about five years now, 2000. 16, I think is the first one I looked at, 17, 18, 19. And uh, Mr. Bertolino, I'm sure knows this well because this is probably presented through his community. Um, I had the ability to talk today to St. Louis County and um, uh, police department and wanted to understand a little bit more about this. And what I found really interesting is this is a really comprehensive crash report. And what it, it tells you is it tells you the highest locations, and what some of the causes for those crashes include. Um, and what I found really interesting is this crash density, certainly that you're gonna look at right here on the screen um, is from 2019. And as one might imagine, certainly Highway 100, Manchester Road and 109, especially over that by the, the BA area um, uh, where there's gonna be a roundabout put up soon, um, certainly has the highest crash density. And then as we look towards this old state, you're looking at this blue, that's between one to four crashes. Um, um, over the entire year. And actually, when you go back and look at this area over the five years, in fact, there's not that, and fortunately, there's not, um, there's not more than um, uh, eight crashes over that time frame. at least when you go back and look at that, which I think is really nice in the respect that we talk a lot about public safety. And fortunately, um, Ms. Council Chair Pericanus is the second highest traffic count, which means our denominator for numbers of cars that are traveling is really high, is, is a larger number, and your number of crashes is actually low. And so therefore, your, your ratio of, of actual traffic passed on that road against crashes makes this intersection, ironically, uh, more safe than one might expect. It doesn't mean that it doesn't make it nerve wracking or make certain problems with traffic flow. Um, when you go down and look at the number of crashes by location, um, as reported in this document, 
um, certainly Old State and Ridge Road were not included um, as uh, areas that had a crash, at least in the past year. But frankly, um, there's two other locations that are a little bit closer to 109 where you would find um, uh, the crashes and when they occur. And I'm just going to scroll down for the for folks to just see this because I think it's important. Um, this is with injuries. We don't ever want any of these to happen. There was a, certainly one that was prior to that location um, uh, right there on the map. And then finally, the last thing I'll just show is the, the sad piece, which is the, um, the fatalities um, that we see. And as one might expect, um, most of them all unfortunately right at where we're gonna have the roundabout with uh, BA on 109 and then certainly on 100. Thankfully, Old State has not had one until you get right towards 109. And in this report and in the past four reports for safety purposes, as it relates to crashes, um, uh, Captain Mundell and others from the police uh, recommendations did not list um, Old State and Ridge as an area for safety concern that would need the prioritization for um, some sort of um, uh, mitigation or intervention at this time. So um, that's a good thing. Um, that doesn't negate the fact of Mr. Uh, Frank's comments, which I fully support, is you always want to be proactive. The question we have with limited funds is whether or not um, we need to be more proactive with some of these other areas that actually are seeing, like Clayton Road right now has the highest increase in the past few years, unfortunately, of uh, serious crashes. So Mr. Brown, to that point, I just have three questions and then a comment. So um, what prioritizes if the last bunch of crash reports for safety purposes didn't list this location as one of those locations? Why are we prioritizing this location specifically over areas that have higher safety concerns as it relates to reported crashes? And I fully recognize that if you don't report your crash, it's not going to be counted. So this crash report, as previously mentioned, may have some bias with underreporting, but at least it's not serious enough that there was an automatic reporting by EMS arriving on the scene. So what, how, what prioritizes these, this location specifically for you? Is that, is that a yeah, yeah, I wanted to understand exactly why this location. Well, I think, as I tried to explain earlier, it's, it's not just safety, it's, it's it's congestion, it's it's accessing Ridge Road from Old State Road. It's the difficulty folks are having making turns on Old State from, from Ridge Road. So it's not strictly a safety concern. And I, I would point out too, and it was referenced by one of the residents, this project evolved from an overall study that was completed and I believe it was 2017. Sure. It was done mutually with St. Louis County and the city of Ellisville, where we looked at the whole corridor of Old State Road and developed a concept plan that included the roundabout at Ridge Road, included a roundabout at Old Fairway, uh, and, the, and the PED shared use path that we've also put in for funding application. So okay. all these projects have come out of that original planning effort of 2017 to try to address the many deficiencies in this segment of road, but it's not strictly crashes that's, that's driving this. And I, I would also say too that, and the statistics can always be a little bit misleading. So the fact that you see crashes necessarily on 100 and there may be a high crash density doesn't mean necessarily that even the projects that we're proposing out there will address all those crashes. Right. They most certainly aren't. Um, certainly some of them would be addressed, but but in large part there's, there's gonna be some crashes that, that really wouldn't be addressed by those improvements either. Okay, um, just to answer Ms. Pierce's question about whether or not the statistics shown were based off of uh, volume of, of, and in fact, actually, Ms. Pierce, these are the absolute numbers of crashes. So when you do account for volume of traffic, it makes that intersection in comparison to some of the others based off of crashes and Clayton Road and other things, it makes this intersection more safe than those locations because the traffic flow is not the second and highest in the county as, as referenced by um, Mr. Garitano. And there certainly are other places on 109 that have elementary schools in Manchester that certainly have similar um, problems. Mr. Brown, just two more questions. Um, have, if, if we were to move forward and be successful with this grant um, or, or um, a federal allocation, what additional funds do you anticipate post roundabout for sidewalks or pedestrian bridges or things that might have to be in place that are going to have to navigate around such a roundabout and such an interaction, this inter inter um, intersection? Um, I, I don't really anticipate any additional costs for this project. Um, 
this would be a, a St. Louis County roadway improvement. They would be responsible for maintaining the constructed features. The only thing that, that could come up if there was an agreement to landscape or provide additional landscaping, uh, my expectation would be similar to MoDOT that the county would, would not maintain that and they'd expect the municipalities to, to do that, that, that work. But uh, beyond that, I don't expect additional costs. Okay. No, that's helpful. And then my last question is um, in Kirk talking with one of the colonels in, in the county, um, the mention was, um, and Captain Mundell is an expert in this area because he started the actual traffic court, um, uh, traffic um, police. Point of information, could you just yep. say the colonel you spoke with? Yeah, uh, Colonel Bader today. So, um, so when roundabouts get put in, um, Mr. Brown, um, we, ironically, one might think that they certainly, they improve traffic flow when it comes to safety, we do see a spike actually, especially in the first part of um, when they're put in for a time period afterwards that traffic accidents actually increase in those roundabouts. And then hopefully over time as people are educated and you're losing them, then there seems to be a flattening out. Is that true at least from your experiences? I think that's fair to say. And I'd, I'd say we saw that very thing on 109. when <clears throat> We uh, constructed the first roundabouts to the north of 100. Um, but ultimately once people get used to them, the crash history on the single lane roundup, roundabouts is quite good. Okay. Uh, and, I, and I would say traffic signals result in increased crash right. as well, unfortunately. Uh, if they didn't, right. And they don't help traffic flow, which is the problem with using signals, which I found out today specifically. All right, so I'll wrap up real quickly, Count um, Chair. So um, I think today Council Member Galani really was most impactful in letting me understand because I've spoken to some citizens in my ward specifically who had a lot of concerns about allocating funds specifically for this project. But, you know, if there was a safety concern, I think everybody would agree that when there's safety concerns, we've got to prioritize that to the top of the list always. I'm not sure that this um, is going to be a per se a safety problem, but Council Member Galani was most impactful by telling me today that this really is a traffic flow problem. And given the fact that it's the second highest traffic flow location, Hearing that someone has to wait at a stop sign for like 30 minutes is frankly unacceptable if we can find better ways to try to improve the traffic flow in that area. And so I think that that is probably the most impactful consideration, especially hearing from some of the citizens tonight. And so um, I have no problem in supporting both my fellow friend and chair council member Garitano. I think we should move this forward to, um, uh, to our uh, council. Um, but I think we need to be transparent with the rest of the city to say that, listen, this is for traffic flow problems that certainly have connotations for safety, but we've got to improve that traffic flow in that area because the congestion may not be always reflected in just crash data. But as Council Member Galani mentioned, when there's accidents on Manchester or on 44, that directly impacts a lot of workflow and school flow, which is certainly a problem that I think we can certainly improve. And so I'd like to make sure we move this forward, but then also work on a different system to prioritize development of these projects in the future with this, with this committee. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other questions or comments? Council member uh, uh, Rambo and then uh, Galani, I see is your hand down. So, oh, you still have your hand up. All right, and, and folks, and just try to keep the meeting moving here. If you want to just try to keep your comments succinct and to the point, that'd be great. Thank you. Council Member Rambo, you're up. Great. Um, yeah, this has been dragging on for a long time. These folks deserve relief. I'm concerned um, that we'll submit it and it won't get funded. So I'm, I'm hoping to look for um, ways to improve our posture a little bit. I, I did ask the questions of concerning the report that uh, Council Member Remy shared uh, about safety. Um, and um, it was, uh, I believe I heard Director Brown say that um, this was going to be a safety-based application um, rather than congestion-based, but it's not a, a, safety is not a strong case. I do think pedestrian safety might be a stronger case if that's even uh, uh, something that's generally considered. It's right next to an elementary school, um, what, you know, there, there doesn't have to be a lot, you know, the first accident involved, serious accident involving a ch child riding his or her bike, um, is, um, um, is one too many. And so, um, I'm hoping that, uh, I, it sounds as though we talked about landscaping and so forth. It sounds as though this is really somewhat of a bare bones project already, but I'm, um, my question is to director Brown and it's about, um, ways to, um, to 
value engineer this project, maybe reduce the scope, focus more on that sort of safety um, uh, and less, less cost would then make it a more attractive uh, project. Uh, you know, at least that's my understanding of the way the, the, the process works. Um, and so um, now in the post COVID world, um, is there a, um, is there a way to, um, to make this a simpler project and still get, you know, some of the benefit or do we have to go for the whole thing um, at the same time uh, in fear that we'll never get anything better? Because I got a feeling that if we apply we may get shot down on this basis of, you know, there are worse crash problems uh, in other uh, places in Wildwood. And um, I don't want to see that happen. I'd rather just succeed. So can, can you speak to that, Director Brown? Well, I'll, I'll do my best, sure. Um, again, when we apply, it's it's a competitive, it's on a competitive basis. So we're going right. to install the other municipalities that put in applications um, in that program. Um, so they're doing their best when they evaluate them to look at ours and weigh it relative to the other applications that are submitted. Again, I said a large part of it is the benefit cost ratio that they that is calculated in the in the application process. So it's it's looking at the number of crashes. It's looking at the benefit um, that comes by reducing crashes by by building that roundabout. Um, but there's also um, additional information you provide, and, and they're always very um, always always looking for additional reasons to justify projects and, and where we can address pedestrian safety is always high on the list um, where we can encourage additional uh, users, whether it's bike um, in addition to pedestrian users. Uh, those are always positives and usually add to the, the value of the application. So the fact that the school is there and we can tie this to the, hopefully to the trail system in the future is a very positive and uh, and will weigh uh, favorably when, uh, when they look at our, our application in my mind. Um, the fact that we've also done a planning process, albeit it's been a few years now, but we did go through a planning process with St. Louis County and with Ellisville also weighs in our favor as well, because they look at all those, those things and those questions are asked as part of the application. Um, so it's not strictly looking at only crashes, crashes and benefit cost ratio, it's, it's looking at the big picture as well. So I'm asking if um, if there's if we can if there's any way to apply the 80-20 rule and um, and get most of the benefit for quite a bit less money. Um, we can't eliminate landscaping because it's not in the scope of project. But I'm looking for um, any ways that we can improve our posture by saying, oh, um, you know, we this project is a two million dollar project overall instead of two and a half million. And I know we're jumping in at the 11th hour, but I'm trying to be creative about getting this funded as opposed to getting a good application in that's not gonna be funded. That, that's my focus here. Um, I understand, I don't, I don't know that I have recommendations to, to cut the, the cost of the project or value engineer it on the fly. Um, uh, certainly if, if no, 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 yeah, that, that's not necessary. But if you think there's potential, I would ask you to, um, consider, you know, if everybody else agrees, I'd ask you to consider taking that approach and getting these people some relief um, because otherwise it may be a long time uh, in the post COVID world, there's not a lot of money uh, gonna be floating around. And um, I'd like to see, my concern is for child pedestrian, you know, pedestrian safety in that area um, first and foremost, but I don't live there. And, um, you know, a roundabout reduces proven to reduce pollution, uh, improves traffic flow dramatically, saves gas, blah, blah, blah. I love roundabouts, um, but um, I'm really, my number one concern as a non-resident of that area is child safety. All right. No, All right, sure. thank you for your comments there. Council Member Goli, did you have anything else to say? Yeah, I just, wanna, I just wanna, you know, agree with Council Member Remy, I appreciate his, uh, reiteration of our conversation from earlier today on those points and and also stress that you know a lot you're, you're not always putting a roundabout in for the same reason um, which is strictly to mitigate crashes and, and avoid deaths that obviously is a huge reasoning to put one in but that's not the only reason to put one in and I think in the areas that council member Remy um, illustrated with his um, presentation that showed you know we're already putting one in in the BA 109 area where there was a high uh, percentage of crashes and deaths and that's a great reason to put one there and 
the other area on 100, obviously you can put one in there. So um, where it showed a high degree. So where we are, you know, the pedestrian safety issue and the school being there, I think are huge reasonings to illustrate to the, to the, the aid program, why it's a safety concern. I think Rick and then uh, Mr. Cross can do a great job at doing that. And then the other thing is that nobody wants to get into a crash. And so residents are going to always utilize every, bit of effort they can to avoid that, which is why you've got the traffic flow problem and the fact that it takes 20 minutes to make a left turn out of Ridge on the old state at many times of the day. So we have a high degree of residents from board seven and eight that traverse that specific area every single day, not just during the week, but on the weekends as well. And the congestion is literally unacceptable. And so many other residents of Wildwood go through that area as well, aside from the people that have to use it every day. So I think there's very much the reasoning to advocate this to get done and, and the funding that we can secure for it um, because it's gonna have a massive impact on you know, a high percentage of residents of our city for a multitude of reasons and safety being a huge portion, but also the traffic flow and the volume. So I, I think that I appreciate the, the um, committee's um, desire to move this forward. And I think we can get it to council and, and be able to talk it through and get those other questions answered and get this application turned in. Thanks. Thank you so much. And I'm gonna just make one quick final comment here. So just thanks again for all the good discussion here. And uh, I do uh, appreciate council member Remy coming around and now indicating his support. And I, I think we kind of saw the medical in him, you know, this is like a clogged artery and we wanna prevent the heart attack here. So it's about prevention uh, given all the uh, traffic over there that's going on. So again, uh, thanks for that. Uh, with that, I'm just gonna call the question right here because we've had a lot of lengthy discussion here and just go ahead and go to a roll call vote on the motion that is on the floor. Does everyone understand the motion? Carla, do you have it? Yeah, Chair, point of clarification. I, Remy didn't come around. I, I actually, I, I this is the only time I've ever presented this at council. So thank you very much for letting me present. Thanks, that's a point of information. Thank you, Carla. All right, Carla, go ahead. Okay, for roll call vote, Chair Garitano? Yes. Councilmember Bertolino? Yes. Councilmember Brost? Yeah, could you, re could you repeat the motion, please? To recommend approval to proceed with funding application for the roundabout inclusive of discovery of Ellisville's commitment parameters. Okay, so we're not including the Highway 100? Not, that is what? not part of the motion, if that's what, what you're asking. What are you asking, Joe? So, Council Member Brous, go ahead and ask your question again. No, I guess with the, the motion, I thought it was the roundabout and the, this, the improvements on Highway 100. I thought that was, I mean, that's what, what, is, what was presented to us. I, I, did, not, um, I did not think it was ex exclusive of just the, so, so let me or go, excluded those. Let me go to the maker of the motion there uh, and, and Council Member Brose will be able to handle that and get that concern. Council Member Bertolino, what did you intend when you made the motion the there? The intent was that the full recommendation from Public Works was to be approved. That includes the roundabout, that includes the improvements at, at uh, on 100 at uh, the J turns on Pond and T and the other locations. It included the whole recommendation from Public Works. So, okay, hearing that, um, maybe what I would like to recommend is uh, we have Director Rick Brown. Was that your understanding as well, or do you want to then break that apart to Highway 100 there? Because I just want to make sure all the discussion has revolved around Alt State Road. So I would like to, if we're going to vote, I would prefer my recommendation and maybe we'll have to redo the motion is that we focus on just old state being that that was it and then come back and do a second motion if that's your intent. Well, but, but Joe, what you're saying is Dave's oh. motion is you're taking it off the floor. I mean, Dave's motion should have a right to be voted on. Uh, I just want to make sure that's everyone's understanding. Well, I mean, Dave, but, Dave mentioned his understanding. Now you're trying to change his understanding. Well, so I mean, Dave, why don't you repeat again for Joe what your understanding is. No, hang on a second. Is or what your objection? motion is. Is there any objection on understanding what the motion is from anyone here? Or do you all agree with the motion? 
Council Member Edens, is that an objection to the motion that you? Well, I did not understand it before when I said I would support it, that we were also talking about the Route 100 safety and pro programs as part of the recommendations, because I thought that the Route 100 safety improvements could be fully paid for mode fully paid for by MoDOT in the future. So if that's in the main motion, I'd like to open it back up for discussion because if, if I'm wrong about that, I want to know. Okay. Council Member Edens mentioned that she had objection there. Is there anyone else that has objection with the well, way the not, motion not is? Not an objection to the, the not motion. Not objection to the motion. It's just, just if that understand. is the motion, I, I need, to, I need okay. more clarification on, on that. Okay. Anyone else? Council Member Remy. I have, to step away. I have to step away from an urgent matter. I wanted to support this. So if it's okay with the chair, I'd like to be able to vote on this because this has been going on for a bit and I would love to. I have to leave right now to go and see a patient, but I will be back. I hope to be able to vote on you guys have the new motion, if that's okay. Okay. Thank so, you. Council Member Flasher, do you have anything else on that right now? Yeah, I was under the understanding that this was just specifically on the old state and ridge as well. I didn't know that we were incorporating everything. Yeah. So I agree with Ms. Seasons that we should open this up for a little more discussion if that's the case. I'm not, Council Member Bros, that was my understanding as well. Uh, my understanding was that our Director Brown was looking for direction on which item to proceed forward with an application. Director Brown, can you clarify that? Is that as well? Your well, but, but why don't we just let Dave clarify or, or like, remove his motion off the floor and make a new motion. Dave made a motion I thought that included the several parts. If that's not the motion, then then let's change the motion. Yeah, here and we're hearing differences here. Right. So for the sake of clarity, okay, let's, do, let's withdraw the motion here. I will be happy as a second. Well, wait a second. That's Dave's decision to withdraw the motion, right? Do you do you withdraw it, Joe, as the chair, or does the maker withdraw it? Well, the maker with the second. So I want to make sure, Council Member Berlino, you want to proceed with discussion then with the motion that you have on the floor. Yes, Joe, I thought I was very clear when I made all the comments about the cost. If, if we're gonna have a 20% match on the other two items, I talked about the accidents on uh, Pond and P. I thought it was very clear that the motion was for the full recommendation from Public Works as written with the caveat that we go to Ellisville and negotiate, see if we can get um, more participation from them. That was the total scope of the motion. Okay, including the Highway 100. Yes. Including well, the of course. Now, okay. you seconded Got that, it. Joe. So are you yeah, removing your that. second? You know what? I'm going to keep it. I'm going to okay. keep it here. But I do have one comment because we spent over an hour talking about Old State Road and not a single point of discussion. Well, that's because, that's because you made that happen. Thank so, you. Okay, but, thank you. But Council we Member still Rambo. have to go back to Dave's motion. Councilman Rambo, you're up. Yeah, this is just real quickly. Um, I, I, uh, I object to the as written um, element because I've made some suggestions. Other folks have made suggestions. Maybe we can, you know, redo this slightly, put more of a pedestrian uh, safety flavor on the, the, um, the Old State Road, you know, piece of the project. And you know some other, I think, useful suggestions that make it a more powerful um, and more palatable, um, pro, you know, component of this overall, you know, of our, of our, you know, proposal portfolio, if you will. And um, I, doing it as written means there's nothing more to be not done on um, on these project proposals, and I think there is. So um, maybe everybody else can is free to disagree with me, but um, maybe I'll ask Director Brown. Um, is um, do you see any utility in adding some of the um, concerns that we've talked about in this meeting over the last hour? Um, I'm not sure I'm following your question to be quite honest, uh, council member, you're referring, are you referring specifically to Old State Road? I'm saying, yeah, I'm talking, well, I'm talking about the Old State Road one because that seems to be the controversial one and the one that we can maybe, you know, tweak the, um, intent, add more about the elementary school if it's not already there and add some things, you know, to the verbiage of the proposal and make it more um, attractive and appealing. Um, you you, you um, uh, didn't give me any hope that there's a lot of value engineering to be done, but I, it feels to me as though there might be a bit more work um, 
on that part of the proposal. I actually thought they were separate. You know, Old State was one and Highway 100 is the other, but um, if it's an overall package, there's still work to be done on the Old State one, if I'm not mistaken. Let me, let me clarify. So if we were to put together an application, it would be separate applications for Old State Road and a separate application or maybe two separate applications for Route 100. That's what I thought. My, my thought would be three separate applications. And yes. I, I do want to clarify with my, my memo, I wasn't really recommending that we submit all three or one of the three. I just felt those were three good projects. So if it's the desire to move forward with all three, that's what we'll do. If it's the desire to move forward with one, that's what we'll do. Um, that's what you guys get to decide. Um, I can't say that. Um, it, um, it's not my call, but I'm just concerned that the um, this particular uh, Old State Road project proposal is not as strong as we can make it, given the discussion that we've had over the past hour and a half. And I just want to um, see if you have um, if you think it's reasonable to, um, ex, you know, to expect that you can add some of those suggestions and comments, or if you feel they're already covered in the proposal. Um, we will certainly add, add some of those items. And, and that's basically the application is, is, is fairly uh, explicit in, in terms of what information you have to provide. So mm -hmm. not a lot of room to um, add additional information, but you can embellish and we've done enough of these. So we, we know the, the hot points to make the important keys to stretch, to, to emphasize points to emphasize those kind of things. So um, I think we will definitely uh, consider what's been mentioned. And I don't want to give you the impression that we're not going to. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I just, uh, we were, this motion is as written. That's my heartburn. I want to give oh. you the opportunity to put the strongest possible proposal um, to help these folks out. Uh, and I just, I, I wasn't, it, I, I'm not comfortable yet that we're going to actually do that, but it well, sounds as Point though, of information, um, Council Member Rambo. Okay. The motion that was made is as as written, but with including uh, modifications based on those editorial comments. So, oh, okay. So therefore, right, Council Member Bertolino, you're the maker of the motion. You're in agreement. I'm nodding. I'm the second. So I think we're on the same page. With Great. Okay. Sorry. Sorry All right, for good. that diversion. Then. All right. I think we're Thank there. You. Any other final comments? Otherwise, we're going to move forward to a roll call vote on the motion. All right, so let's start with the roll call mode, uh, vote on the motion. Quick Hopefully, question. what's that? Um, quick question. I, I oh. never got answered. Weren't the two projects, um, uh, one and two under Route 100 safety, um, Rick, didn't MoDOT commit future funding for that? It's just that it's not happening right now. Is that correct? Or am I thinking of another project? Um, so Council Member Eden's it, it wouldn't be fair to say they've committed funding for those improvements just yet, okay. but since they have done the study, they're eligible for funding. And it's my expectation that they will be considered for funding this, this winter as they develop their program um, for their next fiscal year. Um, so we'll know about that um, later in the year, whether they've been successful in that effort. Um, that would be one reason to consider not moving forward with the 100 projects at this point in time just to give it some time to see whether or not MoDOT might indeed move forward and, and place one or both of those improvements on their program and fund it out of their pocket and not ours. Would that be your recommendation? I mean, if I was East West Gateway Council and I saw highly competitive grant applications come in and two of the applications had a potential funding source, I would defer to ones that didn't. Well, they'll, they'll evaluate the, the applications they received based on the criteria that they established. So they'll pick the best projects that are submitted um, on the basis of the, the criteria that they set. Um, so from that perspective, um, if we're okay paying that 20% minimum, that if, again, if that's what we're going to, to submit the application at, um, if that project is selected and it's a good project, then it'll move forward. Um, I did want to clarify, though, on the motion with the Route 100 projects, we've not talked explicitly about what the local match would be. Um, would that local match be 20% as well on 100 as we're proposing uh, potentially on Old State Road? So I don't see how we can move forward with it in the same motion because we don't have a match presented. 
And also because if we just hold our horses a little bit, we might get off with not paying anything or less if I'm understanding correctly. Is that right, Rick? Is it, cause if it is, and if it's okay with the maker of the motion, I mean, I don't want to cause any too many ruffles, but I'd like to amend them, amend the motion then. Okay. You can certainly do that. So is there a motion to amend the motion at this time, council member Edens? And then we'll go to council member Brost who has his hands up. You're still on the floor, council member Edens. Uh, yes. So I, I would like to um, postpone until uh, uh, route 100 safety improvements, number one and two until MoDOT has um, concluded whether or not we are on the, the work program for uh, the future. Okay, so second, council member Flasher, second. So we have an amendment on the floor. The amendment is now for discussion on the postponement of the Route 100 items. Any discussion on those items on that? All right, hearing none, then we, uh, Ms. council member Brose, do you have a discussion on that? Well, yeah, I think so. I mean, I mean, maybe to go back to what I hear Mayor Boland say a number of times is, and maybe we should have said this earlier because I thought Dave's motion was the what what maybe the city or what Rick was looking for. But I mean, let's put it this way, Rick. What are you looking for tonight? I am looking for an approved project that I can submit to the city council as a resolution to apply for federal funding. And when you say a project, are you meaning the roundabout? It could be one project or it could be three projects. Um, it's, it's really your preference. Uh, it could be the roundabout project. It could be roundabout plus one of the 100 projects or plus two of the round 100 projects. Um, okay, I, I would, well now I I, I'm confused because I would like to keep the 100 in there, but I also understand that there's variables that might say it shouldn't be there. But I, that's what I'm looking to you, Rick, is to, I mean, I mean, if the variables would say it's not good to have that included, then let's, let's, let's wait on it. But, so just, you know, but I, I do want to advance what we can tonight. Just to be clear, the, the submittal would be separate application for the roundabout, a separate application in my mind for the turn lane project, a separate application for the J-turn project. So they would be submitted independent of each other and they would be judged as individual projects. Okay, that's, that's I think the, we should do them all then. I think we should do them all. Okay, thank you, Rick. Okay, so we have an amendment on the floor. Again, the amendment that made by council member Eden, seconded by council member Flasher is the postponement of the Route 100 items from the recommendation. So we will vote on that first. Uh, roll call vote, Carla. Second, okay. Okay, so let's start with Chair Garitano. Yes. Council member Bertolino. No. Council member Brost. No. Council member Edens. Yes. Council member Farmer? No. Council member Flasher? Yes. Council member Rambo? No. Can I vote for council member Remy also? No, he cannot. <laughs> I was joking, trying to add <laughs> some levity, sorry. Is that all the votes there, Carla? <laughs> It, has council member Remy left at this point? I don't see him. He's not able to vote, it looks like. So he said he had to see a patient. Yeah, he's with a patient. What's the yeah, total? Yeah. Four no votes, three yes. Okay, the no votes uh, uh, prevail. All right, now we're back to the main motion. We'll do a roll call vote on the main motion. And Joe, could we just, uh, Carla, could you just go back and... and and state the main motion again for everybody. Absolutely, please. Uh, okay, that yes, one's for the that. approval to proceed with funding applications for all recommended projects, inclusive of the roundabout and the Highway 100's improvements, uh, inclusive of further negotiation with City of Ellisville, and inclusive of tonight's editorials. Okay, thank you, Carla. Okay, we have that motion on the floor. Carla, go ahead and do the roll call vote. Okay, Chair Garitano. 
Yes. Council Member Bertolino. Yes. Council Member Brost. Yes. Council Member Edens. Is this going to have a cost estimate by the time it gets to council if I vote yes tonight for Route 100 for the city match? Rick will have to do that, yes. And so whatever he brings to the council is what then the council will decide on. Okay, then yes. But at this time, yeah, we, we do not have that kind of level of detail like we did for- Council the Member Farmer. Yes. Council Member Flashar. Yes. Council Member Rambo. Yes. Unanimous yes votes. Okay, thank you. That motion passes. All right, so therefore we're gonna move on to the next item of the agenda. And this item then will be brought to the council uh, work session, I believe, Rick, right? Or is it uh, uh, going straight to? <laughs> well, normally, again, um, I guess I could do it either way, but normally, um, and given the time constraints, I would put a resolution together Okay. Uh, and submit that directly to the council for, for voting. Okay, fair enough. And is that at the next meeting or is that at the following meeting? Um, that's a good question. I hadn't anticipated turning it around quickly enough to get it on the agenda for Monday night, quite frankly. Got it, so be after that. All right, thank you very much. All right, we're gonna move on to the next item on the agenda. Again, thanks for everyone for the very uh, in-depth conversation. Next item on the agenda, we're gonna resume back to our normal uh, list of items here on the agenda. I will make a comment as chair of the meeting that I certainly understand there's been a lot of discussion here tonight and good discussion indeed. So therefore, if there are any items where we do have the flexibility, we can choose to postpone those items to a future meeting, uh, those items that are not time sensitive if therefore we can focus on anything that is time sensitive here. Rick, I believe you have the waste connections item that you definitely probably need to get done, get that out of the way, that's an information item. And then I think you have, uh, let's see, a couple of agreements there. So let's go back to the normal agenda. And again, folks, just keep that in mind if we wanna postpone something. Rick, uh, waste connections 2021 one year extension. Um, thank you, Chair Garitano. This is on the agenda um, to, uh, <clears throat> I guess inform everyone of our um, agreement with West Waste Connections. We're uh, gonna be completing our second year of our current agreement with Waste Connections um, on August 1st. And as some of you are aware who were on council two years ago, when we executed our, our agreement with Waste Connections, it was for two years and then three one-year extensions, optional extensions. So the way the, the agreement is set up, um, unless John Young tells me my read is incorrect, um, both parties can opt out of the contract after the first two year term. Um, if Waste Connections were to consider doing that, they would have to provide us notice by February 1st, which is obviously coming up real soon. And then if we were for whatever reason inclined to do the same, we have to do that 90 days prior to August 1st, which is May 1st. So I did provide you um, in the contract, it sets up the, uh, the rates for the extension years, um, three, four, and five, essentially Waste Connection set a increase every year, an annual increase of 2.8%. So the increases are, in my opinion, reasonable um, moving forward. Um, certainly the department is um, very pleased with Waste Connections um, and their performance in, in this first two year period. In fact, I, I, I should probably speak or highly of them, frankly, because of the influence of the pandemic. Uh, I don't think we've seen any lapse at all in that regard. And, and I know that they were very concerned that, and I know they did have drivers that were out at times um, and, and their services operations were affected. But as far as our own um, services in Wildwood, I, I think they've gone forward very well. And uh, we've been very pleased with them from the department's perspective. So, um, I wanted to present that to you primarily for informational purposes. Um, I do want to ask John Young if he sees that there's any reason that we need to submit anything to city council to confirm our desire to potentially move forward with the, the third one year extension. John, is there, is there anything that we should be doing? I think, no, I don't think there's necessarily a recommendation that has to be made. The question ultimately to this commission is, do you wanna recommend a termination of the agreement? You don't have to make that decision now, you just have to make it before August. Um, 
but I think a report to the council just simply summarizing the exact same uh, matter. Now, if you wish to make a recommendation to the council to continue with the contract, that is acceptable as well. Okay, so then uh, we have this under for information, Rick. Uh, I wasn't aware that then we were gonna take any action here tonight. Um, so can you or John Young, can you clarify that then? Because I just wanna make sure we're doing- let me, right. Okay, let me clarify. No, there's no action that needs to be taken tonight is the very short answer to the question. Thank you. All right, so there's no action there. I do see a hand, Council Member Bertolino, go ahead. Just very quickly, um, uh, I think all the input is that the, the waste connection has done a great job. Uh, I did get a couple of comments last summer when we had the price increase. Although it was minimal, uh, we did have some folks saying it was a surprise. So uh, just to Rick, let's put something out within in the billings or whatever prior to the July one or these August one, I guess, increase, just to alert folks that there isn't gonna there is going to be another increase, so they won't be surprised by it. That's all. Thanks. Yeah. I'll make one uh, comment. Uh, I did uh, get do some polling with residents about uh, almost 500 residents and we've got about 70% that feel the service waste connections is better than the prior provider. So I think they're doing a fantastic job. All right, uh, city in terms of city administrator, Steve Cross. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I just wanted to respond to uh, council member Berlino. Um, there will be, and we will make sure, but um, I'm quite sure that when the bills start to get, uh, when the bills are gonna increase that um, Waste Connect will in fact put something in there an announcement about that price increase at 2.8%. Um, it would, so actually it would come from them, not the city, um, but we will make sure and we'll follow up with them uh, to make sure that that does happen. They've been very, very good about their communication in addition to their service and so forth. So um, um, it would be it would be my recommendation um, tagging on along with what, um, uh, City Attorney Young said that when it gets time to go to take this to council, that I think the committee should actually make a recommendation to um, go forward with the one-year extension uh, with Waste Connections, uh, as opposed to not doing anything. I think I think a formal recommendation from the committee to council would be appropriate. Okay. Uh, Councilmember Edens and Councilmember Broston Farmer. Go ahead, Councilmember. I'm going to be super quick. I have uh, two residents with questions. One asked if when we redid the contract, if we could include options for individuals that wanted to pay more, if they could have unlimited bags of yard waste. I, I um, told this individual about the program where they can sign up with Waste Connections, pay extra per bag, but I think they were wanting the opportunity to, to not know how many they were going to have until, you know, the night before it was collected. I did also explain that the trucks were smaller and that's probably why Waste Connections wanted to know exactly how many bags that household was going to put out. Is there an opportunity for um, citizens that want to do that to pay more, to have more picked up, like, like Meridian uh, that we, we did with them? Lauren, would you send me an email about that and we'll pursue that with Waste Connections, please? Yes. Yes, I also had a um, another resident ask about you know the street leaf collection like they see in Baldwin. I I did mention that we're dealing with a city with different needs, so that there's lots of rural areas, so that changes per capita costs, and that's not something that I've heard that rural areas want. Am I incorrect? And that's why we have an option offered that as an option. We have visited that we item. them when we when we started the they don't have the equipment right Got now. Okay. That, the trucks that they purchased to service the city of Wildwood doesn't have that ability. That doesn't mean that they can't acquire those. Um, um, but that's something that, that if we feel that residents want to have, uh, we can go forward with, a, with a, a survey or whatever, but they can provide that service uh, and there will be a cost for that. But there, there hasn't been any push from this committee or from council uh, for us to seriously pursue that option. But if that's the case, we can do that. Okay, thank you. I've heard it anecdotally a couple of times that people are interested, but I don't have enough hard data. All right, thank you. Okay, uh, Councilmember Brose, you're up. Yeah, I would just like to say sometimes simple things in life are very nice. And I actually take my trash can out and it's pointed one direction when I leave it at the end of my driveway. And I look out and whenever the driver has come, my drive, 
my cans always shifted in a different direction and I really appreciate it. I always know that he's picked it up. So Rick, I don't know if that's a practice, but I tell you what, they are just so much better every time. And it's not only the trash, but the recycle guy, they do the same thing. I, you know, and I don't know when they come, but I look out there and I go, yep, they've come. It's in a different, it's in a different direction. And I, I really appreciate it. So, Got you know, gross, we make sure you get the best service. Well, I hope everybody gets that outstanding Absolutely. service. Absolutely, That is exactly right. All right. Council member farmer, you're up. Yeah, I was just going to say, I think, you know, those guys have been doing a great job. Um, you know, I've heard nothing but good things about them. So if there needs to be a motion to proceed, you know, with the new contracts, I'm happy to make it. If we don't need it, then we don't have to worry about it. Help per uh, City Attorney John Young, uh, there is no motion. And since this is for information item, we won't have any. All right, we are going to move to the next item. I did get a message from Councilmember Remy about requesting if he could formally vote on the previous bill in support. Um, unfortunately, the vote is closed on that item. No vote uh, can be taken. City the, uh, the Attorney Young, is there any other thing uh, that could be used to address that? Or is it possible for Councilmember Remy? Prior to the vote being taken to be able to vote. That, mass, that matter has been addressed, Mr. Chair. Okay, so that matters. That vote's been taken already. The vote that you requested to vote on in the previous item, yeah, it's it's already passed. Okay, did you accept my I vote then at that time, as I mentioned, for support? You have to be physically present to vote. The, mo the motion passed. Okay, moving on. Uh, we have the next item on the agenda, which is the back to four action. We have the consultant supplemental agreement for Manchester Road shared use path project. Rick. Um, thank you, Chair Garitano. Um, council members, um, our consultant TWM is uh, completing final design plans for the construction of our proposed new shared use path along Manchester Road. Uh, that would run between State Route 109 to Pond Road. It's supposed to be constructed on the north side of, of uh, Manchester Road in that area. Um, our right-of-way consultant is working on easement acquisition. Currently, we've made those contacts and expect to be finalizing easement acquisition in the coming months. Uh, in fact, we should have a closed session with City Council to talk about that um, at, a, at, a, at a meeting coming up very soon. Um, after we get the easement acquisition in hand, uh, the consultant will need to finish up the final design plans. And after MoDOT approval, we'll start uh, bidding the project um, for construction. I did want to remind you that we were fortunate and, and did receive federal funding after we applied for it on this project. Uh, on this one, we did put in a higher uh, local match of 50%. The federal funding amounts to $575,000 in total. So the current uh, estimated cost of the project is $1.25 million, and that's been included in the capital improvements program for 2021. So during our right-of-way negotiations, and as we've moved into final design plans, a number of things have come up which have exceeded the uh, consultant's scope of work, um, which we agreed to uh, at the beginning of the project. Um, uh, and there's a number of, of items that have basically increased their level of effort. And as a result, they have submitted to us a, a supplemental agreement, um, which we have reviewed and uh, we are bringing to you tonight uh, with a recommendation for approval. The, the work that's included in the supplemental agreement relates to the number of properties um, that we estimated would be uh, impacted with the project. Um, we originally included um, effort for the consultant to uh, work on 12 parcels. And we actually have 15 uh, included in, in the project now. Um, that was related to the fact that we had originally assumed the, the trail was gonna be on the south side and we had then moved it to the north side of the road, which created that issue. Secondly, the level of effort relative to changes that have resulted from right away negotiations has increased. Uh, we had included an assumption that we would have six properties that we would need to make modifications to the plans. As we've gotten into this, um, trying our best to accommodate the uh, needs of the property owners, 
um, we're up to about 10 total changes. So there's a differential of four properties that we're trying to work through with the supplemental agreement. And finally, it also covers um, a couple other items. We've added uh, street lights to the project. So we are asking uh, under the supplemental agreement for the consultant to design plans to add the town center style treat street lights um, to the uh, project limits. And finally, uh, would like to incorporate or have the possibility of incorporated some limiting land, limited landscaping into the project as well, um, which would be consistent with town center, other areas of town center and, and, and other streetscape, streetscape portions of Manchester Road immediately to the west. So um, those are the main uh, items of work that are being added to the consultant's scope of work. Um, the total dollar cost for the supplemental agreement is just under $42,000. So that's the recommendation is to uh, execute a supplemental agreement with TWM to cover this additional work at the not to exceed cost of $42,000. And uh, with that, I'm available for any questions uh, from the council members. So yeah, any questions or comments related to what Rick just brought up? Rick, are you looking for them for that recommendation, a motion? So I am looking for a um, approval uh, by the committee of that recommendation. And if so, uh, if that happens, I'll, I'll prepare the uh, agreement, which will go to city council for full approval. Is there a motion for recommendation, Larry? This is ward one uh, or anyone? You know, I guess, uh, Rick, if I'm looking at this, the the total projects two hundred and twenty nine thousand. The total consultant agreement, I believe that's correct, sir. Yes. Okay, so the two hundred twenty nine thousand is the total cost of the consultant agreement. That is the total cost of the consultant services um, to design the project. Yes. Okay, and then is this something that needs approval? tonight versus can it be postponed till we work further on the open? I mean, like you, you, like we just heard a lot of talk tonight about a, a roundabout, uh, you know, that would be a similar cost. What's more important? Um, is this something that needs to be voted on tonight? Well, I, from the department's perspective, yes, it's, it's a project that we committed to in our, in our 2021 budget. Um, and with the federal funding, we have a deadline to get the, uh, the project under construction this year. Otherwise, we'll have to forfeit the federal funding. So, Okay, so what's the federal funding versus our cost? I mean, what is our cost? Is our cost 229 plus some portion of the other cost? What is our cost? So the, the cost would be the 229 is the total design cost. And then the construction cost is $1,250,000. And how much of that would we pay? The total federal funding is 50% not to exceed $575,000. So we're gonna pay everything beyond $575,000. So approaching a million dollars. Um, so we're, that's probably about right. Yes, sir. Okay. So this would be substantially more important than a roundabout. Well, it, from the perspective of the department, it, it's included in the 2021 budget. So I, look I don't at care about the budget. I'm caring about what's best for the residents of Wildwood. So what this is saying is that, I mean, we are talking serious dollars for things and we're talking about a pathway that's going to be a million bucks. And we just talked so much about and heard so many residents talk about a roundabout, which even after cost overruns might be somewhere between 250 and 400,000. And this is a million bucks. These are the tough decisions we need to make. And, and you know, Steve Cross, you know, help me out because you're, you're in the middle of this. What, what do you think on this? I mean, we're, I, I just don't, I don't, if we're, I don't see this as important and we don't have unlimited funds. So what is the most important use of our money? Uh, this is a big dollar amount. Steve, can you help me here? Uh, yes, sir, Mr. Brost. Um, and again, it, it's, it is the, 
the decision by the council, the full council, in terms of what projects for the entire city are, are most important. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We have eight major goals, and we're now in the process of identifying under those eight major goals what the, the what the prioritization is of the sub goals. And there's a, and there are a lot of them. Uh, the information that I've provided to the council previously identifies the dollar uh, amounts, at least of those projects that have federal funding, because the the thought would be at least so that to give you all. Um, you know, transparency to those projects that that should you choose not to pursue them, there is a cost perhaps for those that that have that we've applied for and we've actually gotten a um, commitment for some federal funding. Now, there's a lot of projects that we're talking about applying for, but that's not a done deal at this point. Um, but the point is well taken, Councilmember Brost, in terms of what the council needs to look at. You're right. Um, I do not have a printing press in my office where I can print money. Uh, we don't have a tree out behind City Hall where I can go and pick money off of that tree. We have a finite amount of money uh, in terms of what, you know, what we can spend over the next five years, regardless of what was put in the 2021 budget. That's why we stopped. And then we're looking at the strategic plan and saying what is most important for the city and its residents over the next five years. So we will, if hopefully we'll be able to address that perhaps this coming Monday, but if not, it'll be the following council meeting, um, depending on what's on the agenda, but we're not going forward, at, at least, you know, this is the conversations that the mayor and I are having um, and, until you all decide what is most important. If it, rather it's a shared use path or it's um, uh, another park or it's um, highway 100 improvements or a roundabout. Um, but you all, that's why you're in the positions you are. You all get to make the decision. So uh, until, until that is done and brought to conclusion, these are discussions, but, but no commitments are being made because we're, we're in the middle of trying to decide what's most important for the city. Okay, so if we vote on this tonight, it's not a commitment. Is that correct, Rick or Steve? I mean, what are we voting on then just to to bring legislation to the council? So, yeah, the request, the recommendation is to bring a supplemental agreement to the city council uh, for this additional design work to finish the design of the project um, so we can construct it. So we've already dis dis we've already started the design of the project. Yes, sir. We've and we've incurred a 187,000 for that. Uh, I don't know the exact number, but it's on that order, yes. Yeah, but it, it so so we've already spent one hundred eighty-seven thousand. We'd have forty-one pending plus the actual cost of the pathway. That's correct, and and I okay. to be honest, we'd have that, and we have right-of-way costs as well. Yeah, I mean, I don't mind bringing it to the council, but honestly, I don't think I'll vote for it because you know, like we we just we have to put it in line with with what we hear as our other priorities. And, and this did not, I don't think this made the top of the list. I, I mean, I, I think it was toward the bottom of the list, but I don't mind advancing it to the city council, but I mean, I, I would not feel good approving this and then telling all the residents at Ridge and Old State that we, we put a path in and we, we couldn't do your roundabout. I mean, that's just, that, that is just, and there's priorities. And like, you know, Rob said earlier, one life is too many. So, well, I, so. I guess I, I would, if I can just say one thing, I, I get that there are priorities and the projects that in my mind should be prioritized are the ones that we can get federal funding for. And this is one that we did get federal funding for. And from that standpoint, I think it's very important that we move forward. Yeah, I, I sort of relate that to going to the grocery store and keep buying stuff because it's on sale. <laughs> Either it, it's just not a good approach. I, I mean, I hear you, but I I don't want to keep buying something because it's on sale. We still have to look at, you know, what's the best use of the money. And I'm only one person, but you know, um, but I hear you, and um, 
And, and Rick, just so you know, if your ears were burning over the last couple of days, I've paid you compliments at least a half a dozen times because I spent some time over the last week driving around Wildwood, looking at our roads and our bridges and what's been done. Um, and I, I really do feel that we do a great job. And, and that's not we, it's, it's really the, it's you. So I, I, I really appreciate it. I mean, um, I, I really do. I think when we spend money, we do it very well. So, and that, that is, that's really good. Thank you. Harry, I would like to echo your comments and I really appreciate it because coming from the person whose ward this is in actually, you know, you're, you're really, really speaking here genuinely and, you know, and, and that's why you can understand my frustration. You know, I'm, I'm trying to fight for a quarter of the cost uh, on that other item. And, and, you know, I think that's where we need to really start thinking, putting on a bigger hat at all the work here, because, you know, looking at asking all those kinds of questions that were asked about just an hour ago at all the projects, you know, I think it has to be fair that way. So uh, Larry, I echo, I commend you for, for being very honest and genuine about that. Councilmember Bertolino. Is it appropriate, uh, and Rick, I don't want to throw water all over your grand parade of this one, but is it appropriate folks that we delay any action on this and kind of tell the um, designer to stand to and stand down until the council has finalized its priorities? and made a council citywide decision as what our real priorities are. Um, I know that throws a wrench in things, but, um, I, and I'm also curious, Rick, what is the, the, the this, this path goes from 109 to Pond Road, right? That's correct. Now, what happens at Pond Road? I mean, Pond Road is a terrible place to, to it's, on, it's on the north side of Pond Road too, right? North side of 100? It's on the north side of, of Manchester Road, yes. Not right. not 100, but Manchester, old Manchester is the way people think of it, but yeah. not, not the divided section, it's the two lane old road. Okay. All right, uh, had my say, thanks. Rick, and then hearing council member Bertolino, is that possible? Can we stand, as Bertolino said, you know, stand down temporarily? Would that cause any disruption? Well, it certainly, to be, to be quite frank, it, it wouldn't be my preference. Um, we do have a deadline. As I said, the federal funds are obligated for 2021. We have a deadline to get the right-of-way cleared by essentially June 1st. Um, so I feel like I'm pushing up against that deadline. And, and some of these changes I need to make um, to finalize the right-of-way acquisition and, and then present that to the city council. And there's just a lot of steps that have to be done between now and June 1st. So it, it, it will make our life more difficult, frankly, but if that's the decision, we'll do the best we can to, to move forward in that manner. I mean, Rick, you're saying we've got to secure some right-of-ways or easements and, and that cost is not included. Um, I mean, I, I mean, if we don't approve 41,000, we're throwing away 187,000. Is, is that a fair statement? Um, absolutely, that's a fair statement. That's correct. Um, the, the engineering well, that will be unused. Yeah, I, I mean, go ahead, Steve, I'm sorry. Um, Rick, I'm not sure that that is a, a fair statement. Um, let me just, I mean, we have the design, um, the, inf the work that has been done that we've paid for to this point is not going to go away. That work is, is still valid and so forth. Um, um, I'm just, if, if we follow along with what uh, Mr. Uh, Council Member Bertolino said and we stand down, um, the work that's already been done is still in place. It could be put put on the back burner for the time being. So it's not like we're throwing that away. If, if this project is voted by the council to go forward either now or a year from now or something like that, that that design work that's been done uh, could be resurrected, and then any additional design work that needed to be done. So that that I mean, we're not just flushing that down the toilet, correct? 
Well, I, I suppose I would agree that yes, if, if there was a decision made down the road, you could potentially reutilize these plans and, and, and dust them off and, and, and modify them as necessary. I guess I was you know, taking the position from what I was hearing it, that, that that wouldn't necessarily be the case. If you don't move forward with a project, then the engineering dollars are, are basically wasted. Um, and we've lost, of course, the uh, $575,000 in, in grant money. In fact, we may have to repay if we, if we really went that path. We have an agreement. So when we get these federal funds, we sign an agreement with the uh, state of Missouri to receive the funds. So we've already received some uh, um, reimbursements for the engineering costs. I believe I'll have to double check the, the specific amount, but it's very possible that those would have to be reimbursed. Um, so we'd be writing a check to the state of Missouri to pay back those monies if we don't move forward. So um, just, just to be aware of that. But. Well, and, and again, we need to make sure there's full transparency to the council about these types of things because that will affect your decision-making council um, in terms of where you spend the money and, and if the cost to not go forward with a particular project um, is such, then you know you as as part of a 15 member council now uh, have to make that decision but uh, every committee that is meeting right now um is is being faced with the same situation um i don't care if it's the watershed committee uh commission or anybody else um as long as we're in this process of a of a full-blown five-year strategic plan being driven by mayor boland um and until the full committee decides on what those priorities are for this year, next year, next year, next year. Um, it's pretty tough to make some decisions right now um, because that five-year plan that the mayor is committed to the residents and, and that we're going to put together, we've identified the eight top goals and now we're doing the sub goals, but that's going to be, that's our Bible going forward for five years. So, I mean, the decisions are going to be in your all's hands. It's not Rick's and Rick's hands or my hands or, or whatever, but you all as part of the council will ultimately decide where we spend the money that we do have available from coming out of our general fund, our capital improvement fund, um, and, and monies that are, that are committed to us by, uh, through uh, grants and, and federal funding. Councilmember Bertolino, you got your hand up. Yeah, Rick, how, how long can we, I, thanks, Steve, I, I appreciate that, that input. How long can we put off this next step in the design um, if we pushed it off a, a quarter, 90 days, so we had time to get our priorities straight within the council? Does that hinder us if we failed to meet a deadline with the, and would have to pay money back to the state, uh, sort of, clue us in on that well if, if we again if we if we don't move forward with the project we would have to um well the, the agreement would dictate the exact process that we'd have to go through for with, with modot but if we if we'd received any benefits any reimbursements we would assuredly have to, to refund those monies to modot um again my my main concern is essentially june 1st clearing the easements through MoDOT um, by that date, um, there's still a fair amount of work that needs to get done. So I, I really don't have more than 30 days that I can accept the delay on it and expect to meet that, that deadline. It's just, there's just too much work that needs to be done. So I don't, I don't know how long our prioritization process is gonna last, but if it's a, if it's a several month long process, I, I just don't see that I can wait effectively and then still expect to meet that deadline. Um. Hmm. Well, we have right now on the agenda is the is the next step of part of phase two is on is on the agenda for the work session. So um, even if it's a short discussion, rather than getting into the full blown about the prioritization, depending on 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 what items the mayor wants to address, um, cause like I say, he's got some things in mind that, that he says are more important than the, than the strategic plan, um, which he's working on right now. Um, but
but if nothing else, we can bring this up that there, you know, there's some, there's some hard deadlines facing us. Uh, and, you know, we may have to expand the strategic planning, the time frame, and maybe we can't get it all done at work session or something, because ultimately <clears throat> we don't want to leave money on the table if that's the decision of, of the council. So I, I would, I would say, uh, and I'll, and I will, um, converse with the mayor about this, that, that even if it's not going to be, we're not going to spend an hour on this. Um, maybe we just discuss how we want to approach it for projects like this, where there's money on the table. How does he want to handle that? So I'll make sure that that is at least discussed at work session next Monday. All right. Council member Brost. Yeah, Steve, I, I think that's a great idea. Um, you know, that along with, I mean, like we, we've got a, a number of decisions that have been made and this is one of them. And we're really putting Rick in a difficult position here, which I would not want to be Rick in this situation because it is a difficult situation and I don't want to make his life difficult. So maybe there are a number of them with, that we address and we just accept that these are in process and we're, we're not going to stop. We continue because life has to go on. So I, you know, I, it's a very practical approach to real life. And uh, I just, I'm just having a difficult time talking about, you know, three to three X the money versus a roundabout is a priority. I, I, I'm, I have to stay with how I feel, but, but we do have to continue. And part of that, Rick, was back when we talked about the two bridges on, on Wild Horse Creek. I mean, to continue was, was 17,000. And that was not something we want to stop and delay because it's such a minor amount. And, and I'm not opposed to continuing the 41, but because there is value to that. But beyond that, we're still probably looking at, you know, by the time you get easements and everything, you're probably talking 750,000. And I don't think the residents of Crown Point would put that more important, nor the residents of Ward One. I mean, I, I mean, I used to take my son to Ridge Elementary School. I know that turn quite well, but it was much lower traffic. So, but no, I think it would be a good approach, Steve. Thank you. Hey, Larry, do you want to make a motion on that now? What would the motion be? Well, since it's already in the works that we're going to go ahead and move forward at Rick's recommendation at this time. I, I really don't have a problem with making a motion to move forward with the 41, but I'll say that in the sense that I, I don't see us approving 750,000, but I don't want to, I don't want to derail things we have in process. So I, I I'll make the motion to continue on to 41. Is there a second on the motion? Council Member Edens, are you seconding it? Yes, and okay. then I, I just want to say I thought Larry's analogy of, of buying things on sale was really good. And um, I'm struggling with the same things you are, Larry. But as I was listening, I, it also occurred to me too that, that as we lose money and have lost revenue, so has the state and, and so has the, the federal government um, in many ways with taxes. And thus, there may be less things on sale in the future. Um, at least for the next couple of years. And so it, it might just be that maybe this isn't uh, the most important project, but it might be the right time for this project, especially because it's underway. So it's, it's just something we'll have to, something to grapple with, but uh, I see less sales in the future. Okay. I don't see any other hands up. So we've got a motion on the floor made by council member Brost and seconded by Edens. Carla, can you repeat the motion? <clears throat> to recommend approval of a supplemental agreement with TVM in the amount of 42,000 in the Manchester Road Shared Use Path Project. Okay. okay. Um, let's try voice on this here. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Any opposed? <coughs> none, any abstain? All right, the motion passes unanimously. All right, next on the item, Rick, the consultant agreement with the Davy Resource Group for the 2021 Ash Tree Program. Rick, do you need this taken care of tonight or can we wait till next time? Um, 
I hate to say it, I would really like to move forward with this um, so maybe I can get David quick. started. Yeah, maybe we can get this done quick. Let's go ahead. Um, I, I would hope so, uh, council members. This was um, uh, more or less a, a, an FYI. We've been working with Davey, as I know you know, um, for a few years, uh, helping us with the Emerald Ash Borer and um, Ash Tree situation. Uh, they presented us a proposal to do some continued work for 2021 to help us with the EAB program and to put together a bid for tree planting to help replant all those trees we're gonna lose. Um, we've been very pleased with the work that they provided. Uh, so Andy Berg will be assisting again in this effort. So they put a proposal together for 2021 and I provided a rough um, scope of work in my memorandum for you. The overall cost of the contract would be under $10,000. So what I was recommending is that it would be an, uh, an agreement uh, that the city administrator, uh, Mr. Cross could sign uh, instead of taking to the city council because it was under $10,000, uh, unless that the, the committee felt otherwise that was that was the recommendation was to move forward with an agreement to be executed by Mr. Cross um, and proceed with these uh, consultant services with uh, Davy Resource Group for 2021. Okay, hearing that then, is there are any, uh, anyone that just wants to make a motion to just move forward with the recommendation? I saw two hands jump up, Councilmember Rambo and Councilmember Eden. Sorry, Councilmember Flasher, I can see Eden's go up before you. Uh, assuming, is this a motion to move forward with the recommendation as Rick has outlined? Yes, sir. Councilmember Rambo? My, mine wasn't. Um, so I'll, I'll just make a couple of quick comments. I'm as tired as everybody else is and my back hurts, but um, I have concerns and complaints and observations galore concerning the Emerald Ash Borer program. I've spoken to Director Brown about it. Um, he s s kind of shares some of those concerns. Um, I, um, Andy Berg, I've had lengthy conversations with him. Um, he's a very knowledgeable forester. He um, is uh, skeptical about some of the things that we're doing. This is only 10 grand. Um, I can see the value in some of it. I can't see the value in other parts. I don't um, understand the tree keeper um, subscription, but we've been talking about quarter million dollar expenditures. That's 2,500. And um, I, I would support um, uh, the recommendation or the motion to, um, you know, to let um, Administrator Cross uh, pay this, but um, I really think we need some work on the Emerald Ash Borer program, and I don't want to do that with, I don't want to move it forward without making that, driving that stake in the ground. Okay, hearing then that your hand was not up then for a motion uh, to move forward with the recommendation, then uh, I know you've got your comment out there, so I'm going to again ask the question, is there a motion then on the floor, whether for or against or to postpone. Council member Flasher, or, or actually council, well, let me ask council member Rambo since he was finishing to speak then, are you gonna make a motion to postpone or to uh, do something else? No, it sounds as though um, um, Director Brown wants this moved forward. I, um, uh, it's a, I want to accommodate his request uh, and it's a it's a relatively trivial sum, but I have concerns about the program itself, and I just wanted to be on record as doing that. I thought okay. Councilmember Edens was going to um, make a motion well, um, to move this forward. I'm going to then see Councilmember Edens. You okay with being the maker of the motion? That's fine. Or if Dan or Rob wants to, that's fine as too. Okay, Councilmember Flasher. Looks like you'll then be second. I'll second. Motion. Any other discussion on the topic here regarding the ash tree consulting here? Okay, all those, we're to voice vote here. All those in favor of the motion to move forward with the recommendation as outlined by the director, please say aye. 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 Any oppose? Any abstain? The motion passes. All right, we're gonna move on next under four administration. We do not have any four information items for action. Uh, the first item is the addendum to the anti-harassment policy. Um, uh, Council member Edens, you, uh, would you seem, I think you had indicated you wanted to cover this item tonight. So I'm gonna respect those wishes here um, uh, unless there's uh, any other opinions here. So let's see if we can address this and perhaps we're in a position where we can move, uh, address it. 
uh, or if not, if there's further discussion, we may table that. Uh, Council, uh, City Attorney John Young, do you want to go ahead and introduce the topic? Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair, members of the commission. At the request of the commission at the last meeting, as you will recall, we had prepared an anti-harassment policy that the commission adopted, I believe unanimously, that addressed sexual harassment. I was asked to expand the scope of that policy to include uh, other protected characteristics. And what you have before you is now expanded anti-harassment policy that includes protection for other protected characteristics. I'm happy to answer any questions regarding the policy itself. Okay, so Council Member Edens, and then I see Council Member Remy's got his hand up. Council Member Edens, go ahead. Yes, I'd like to make a motion to approve the addendum as presented by the um, department and City Attorney Young. And also thanks for doing this tonight because we have already paid City Attorney Young to join this meeting and it's good to keep it rolling along while he's still here, so. Very good. The, the billable minute. hour is noted. We don't pay him. Who said that? Oh, that's right. <laughs> He does this pro bono for the city. He works for cookies. Okay. <laughs> sounds like an official. Sounds like an official record to me. <laughs> All right, let's keep this on track. Sorry, here. John. So I see a second by Councilmember Remy on this. So we have a motion on the floor to then. Uh, did I hear you correctly, Councilmember Eads, is to adopt the policy? All right. Correct. Any yeah. other any discussion on the policy? Okay, seeing none, and it looks like we might have consensus. I'm going to do a voice vote. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstain? All right, this uh, moves forward then. All right, next on the uh, agenda is an uh, item that uh, was brought forth, requested by the mayor regarding the council meeting start time. Uh, City Attorney Young, do you want to talk about that, or do you want me to cover as what the mayor had asked for, or are you comfortable with that? Uh, I, I think I can, I can, certainly, I, I can try to, Mr. Chair. I'll, I'll, I'll kick it off and hand it over to you. Okay, the mayor, and I believe it was uh, indicated in a memo that he had uh, distributed a while back, according to the city charter, it is hard coded in the city charter that the city council meeting, again, the city council meeting only, must start at 7 p.m. and there's no flexibility with changing that start time. Uh, the mayor had uh, asked if we would consider that that language in the charter, which would therefore require a vote and would have to be a ballot item at, at some election in the future to be uh, not restricted to specifically 7 p.m. Uh, I believe it was the mayor's indication for those situations where we have uh, very light agendas uh, short agendas to be able to have that flexibility to say, look, we'll meet at 6.30 or, or something like that. Of course, the posting requirements as required by the Sunshine Law would always be followed. Residents would be notified and so forth. So, Attorney Young, I'll let you go ahead and comment then as well. You're mute. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, yes, the section 38 of the city code, specifically subsection A, states that uh, shall not be scheduled prior to 7 p.m. Uh, in my experience, that is a little odd. Uh, usually that's something that's codified. You say oh, our meetings will occur at some date, so it could be changed. To have it in the charter is a specific time is unusual. Um, but to change that time then would require a charter amendment and the chairman was correct uh, to change that charter provision will require a proposed amendment to the charter go to the voters of the city at a regular election. Okay, city interim city administrator Steve Cross, get your hand um, up. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I just wanted to add a few things in our conversations with the mayor in terms of what his desires are, um, is, is as City Attorney Young just mentioned, to to have it not hard coded in the charter. Um, however, um, he does wanna have some flexibility. So we would need to work on the language. Um, he, he does not wanna change the, the start time of the work session, um, but if it is a light agenda and the work session is over at 6.20 or 6.30, um, he would like the ability then to move into the general session 
um, at that time. However, if the work session goes longer all the way to seven, um, we would start the general session at seven. So there would not be a hard time. So again, uh, we'll need some input from the city attorney in terms of how we're gonna do that language because he does want flexibility um, uh, to, uh, to start the general session and that could be 615 or it could be seven or even a little bit after as, we, as we've done. So um, I just wanted to make sure that you were aware of what his desires are with regards to this and as it relates to the work session as well. And just a point of information, uh, that is as posted. I mean, the Sunshine Law requires us to post a meeting date and time. So it's not that the time would be changed, uh, you know, 30 minutes before the start of the meeting. The Sunshine Law requires that meetings must be posted 24 hours in advance. Uh, so City Attorney Young, I, I think there would be something, maybe uh, the change of the language would be may perhaps start time as posted or, or something along those lines. Correct. And I mean, we could, there's a couple of different ways we could do it. We could put in a range of time, shall not start earlier than 6 p.m., later than 8 p.m. I mean, we could put in a range and that would be, give the flexibility I think that's desired. Okay. Councilmember Berlino. Yeah. Uh, John, that's confusing. Are you saying though that that when we, when we post 24 hours in advance, we have to specify a start time. That's correct. Okay, all right. John, do you have a recommendation on how that language would, should be proposed uh, or you, you mentioned one variation of it. I just wanna know if you have a preference I do not have a preference if, if the concept of a date range or a time range is acceptable to the committee. Uh, we can, I can put something together. I don't know if this is something that needs to be acted upon tonight. Now it will have to be if we're going to get it on the January ballot, which, or I'm sorry, the April ballot, which honestly, I'm not sure we'd have time to do that anyway. Um, so yeah, I, I don't know. Do we know the answer to that, Interim City Administrator Steve Cross, when the uh, ballot items get finalized, if, uh, if April were to be the one to be selected? If April were the one, I, I think it might even be as early as sometime in January. Uh, we kind of looked at this as it related to ballot issues related to the, uh, uh, the, the, the watershed issue, uh, the erosion issue. So I think it would be pretty much this month. And that's why I, I would agree with uh, uh, city attorney that it may be a little tough to get it on the April ballot. Okay. And uh, also for awareness, you know, whenever we do put something on the ballot, there is a cost to the city. So it, it is in the best interest of the city to save money by putting it on a ballot that already has wildwood items. So, so either a municipal election, or if the city were to choose to participate in any other election. So with that, uh, I'm going to look for direction from the committee here as to how you want to proceed with this. If you want to have the city attorney put some language together and come back to the committee for it to be reviewed and then determine whether to move forward to the council. The council will have to vote on it. And then again, as mentioned, it would be scheduled at some point as determined by the committee and council to uh, which election it would be. So in terms of city administrator, Steve Cross. Um, Mr. Young, um, I forget, uh, but it might be helpful to the committee. Uh, the, the, to pass this on the ballot, is it a simple majority, 50% or is it a two thirds vote? It is a simple majority. Thank you, sir. Okay, so I am gonna make that recommendation. Is there any other, uh, anyone that's indicated in support of that recommendation? Council Member Brost. Yeah, I was just wondering if we're going to do that, would there be any other adjustments to the charter we'd want to consider at the same time? Good question there, yeah. Council Member Brose. There is a charter review commission. They proposed a series of recommendations that were put forth before the voters on the April 2018 election. So normally any uh, other, there is a normal charter review process every 10 years, I believe so. I'm okay. not aware of any others. Okay. I would just think you'd want to incorporate them all, any no, and all together. Point. Yep. Saves money on the ballot. Okay. Thank you. Well, 
at this point, the committee can go ahead and agree with perhaps maybe finalizing the language and the issue of whether to schedule can always be addressed separately. Uh, and then at least we have this out of the way, get the language approved to the point where at some point then we will determine when it gets put forth. So if that sounds good, and I'm just again suggesting to keep the meeting going, I'm going I'm to suggest, unless there's an objection, if we can have City Attorney John Young draft some language, bring back to the committee, and then at that point we'll determine uh, whether the language is good or not, and then we'll address the question of when. Okay. Um, did I make the motion there? Is there a second on the motion there? Council Member Remy, I had seen your hand up. Sorry, Council Member Brost, he was, had his hand up first. Any other, any other uh, motion on the floor? Any discussion on the motion? All right, seeing none, let's vote. All, a voice vote. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstain? One abstention. One abstention, noted. Council Member Edens. Okay, the motion passes. All right. Uh, next item on the agenda, again, we'll see if we can knock this out. If we determine it's a long discussion, we can always revisit. Council, uh, City Administrator Steve Cross, you have your hand up. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. The next two items on the agenda, the remote participation policy and the confidentially, confidentiality of closed meetings, um, both are items that um, City Attorney Young would be addressing, but with his permission, I would say that these are not time sensitive items. And in the interest of the time, um, I would say that we could postpone these until the next meeting of this committee, uh, unless City Attorney Young feels differently. City Attorney Young? I serve at the pleasure of the committee. Thank you. Are there any objections from the committee uh, regarding what, in terms of City Administrator Steve Cross, Council Member Remy, had your hand up. Yeah, no, I, I totally agree with um, the, the um, City Administrator. I was actually gonna make a motion for this one, the first one specifically, um, given the, the uncertainty with the current uh, pandemic and when we're gonna be able to potentially meet as a complete council, um, especially with um, some of the numbers that I'm seeing currently. I was actually gonna um, recommend with that uncertainty right now for the first one at least, for us to recommend postponement for at least about four months. That way we can at least get past uh, the lion's share of, of the uncertainty and we can at least make some and we don't have to do this twice we can do this once going forward if there's no objection i'd like to make that motion the only thing i would uh if i, if I can and maybe a partial objection is is maybe just make a postponement without four months and then at some point when we just determine as a committee or you know just someone wants to bring it for i think the intention the spirit's there that you know we're going to wait a little bit i just don't know whether it's four months or what but if, as long as we don't lock it down, if everyone if everyone's okay with that, I would support that. Uh, Chair, I would be more than happy to support that, and I'm happy that you've come around to my thinking tonight. Uh, that's okay. Thank you. I, I might need your help someday. Uh, all right. Um, with that, Councilmember Farmer, your hand is up. Are you going to make a motion? Motion to postpone. I was going to make a motion to oh, postpone. Actually, actually, we had a second the motion. Uh, <laughs> Right, Council Member Remy's uh, first there, but I don't think you had a second there, right? No, I did not. Okay. I was offering a second at four. <laughs> that, that, that's fine. All right, um, motion on the floor to just postpone the item. All those in favor say aye. 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 Well, motion passes. Next item, uh, again, related to what in term, uh, City Administrator Steve Cross confidentiality closed meetings. Um, are there any objections if we go ahead and postpone that item? Uh, Council Member Remy? I'm okay with us actually talking about that one tonight. I think that's an important one. And we've got some serious issues that are going forth in, in closed session upcoming. So um, I, I don't know why we would need to perhaps um, postpone that one. We may be able to discuss that one tonight and get it to council. How about we work out a compromise? If okay. It looks like we are really getting into the weeds and it looks like it's gonna need more than 10 minutes okay. of discussion. Then at that point, I'll just say, you know what, we'll defer it to the next meeting or someone can make a motion. Uh, but you know, if it seems like from the start, like everybody's on board gets it and we wanna knock it out, we could do that. Uh, so sound good to you, Council Member Remy? Absolutely. Okay, because that way good, we could target uh, 9.30. I know you've all put in a lot of time uh, M and Public Works meetings uh, lately have been nice and short, but you know sometimes they're going back to their uh, covering a lot of good items. So, City Attorney Young, do you want to speak to the confidentiality of closed meetings? Again, this is another item that the mayor had requested be visited. Yes, Mr. Chair, uh, members of the commission uh, committee, 
you have a, a memo that I drafted about two and a half years ago, I believe, that just addresses the legal issues addressing confidentiality of closed session items. Uh, one item that is not addressed specifically is specifically the issue of revealing confidentiality of closed uh, information received in a closed meeting. Um, there's been concerns in the past uh, about that having occurred and it was the mayor's request that this be reviewed for more specific legislation addressing that concern. Uh, I don't have any specific legislation before you. Uh, I wanted to gauge, you know, basically get the idea of the committee whether you want to move forward with this before spending the money and drafting something. Okay. Any comments or thoughts from the committee? Well, I, I had a question. Um, uh, um, let, let me, uh, uh, Council Member Eden's had her hand up, if you don't mind. I'm sorry, I apologize. We will come to you. I, I promise okay. you, we will go. go. Ahead. All right, she's going to go, she's going to defer to you. So, Council Member Rambo, you can go. We'll come back to you, Eden's. Well, it's just, um, it's just a, it's a really simple question of clarification. Um, how um, um, the, 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 can you discuss the waiver of waiver of the attorney client privilege as to the subject matter disclosed just a little more fully because I don't understand that particular point. The last paragraph of page one. So the general concept is this, you know, and let me use a hypothetical. Let's say that we're in litigation and I reveal to the council my advice in a closed meeting. And that is a uh, attorney client privileged communication pertaining to litigation. Okay, properly closed. And it's a work product and a privileged communication. If somebody goes out and says to a third party, the city attorney said X or says it in a public meeting. I've come, I've had situations around and about where someone has said, oh, the city attorney just said X about the litigation. The uh, concern is you've just potentially, potentially, there's a lot that goes into that analysis, but potentially waived attorney-client privilege, whereas I may become a witness now uh, and cannot properly serve as the city attorney. And that's the concern. And how do you correct that in the language here? Forgive me for not being an attorney. No, no, and that's fair. And there's nothing in this particular language that's corrective. And that's what I, I'm yeah, you, it's just a memo, and it says it says some things. What you just said is God and motherhood. That sounds great to me. Um, <laughs> and you'll fix it in when you prepare the legislation. Well, and again, I don't want to give the perception that there's a a complete repair to someone who wants to do that. Uh, now. Obviously, we would argue that an individual council member couldn't waive the entire city's privilege. Uh, that would be our first argument. But we want mm. it's it's more to the point of, you know, when we go into closed session and we have conversation, my hope is that we are having very candid and confidential conversation because I want to be able to be candid with the council and I want the council to be very candid with me. Uh, and if there's a risk that somebody's going to go outside the room and immediately reveal that information to a third party, including potentially a plaintiff in a lawsuit, um, we ought to have some sort of repercussion to that disclosure beyond what it currently exists. Great. Thank you. There was another hand up, I believe. Council Mary. Yep. Reeves. yep. So um, City Attorney Young, in terms of other teeth that we could add to this, um, would one of these things be perhaps a financial um, financial penalty, forfeiture of office, temporary suspension from office? Um, Those are all possibilities. When we talk about financial, it wouldn't be necessarily be a civil financial penalty. Uh, okay. It would be more in the context of prosecution and fine. Okay. Now the other, when you talk about forfeiture of office, that would likely require a charter amendment um, to address something like that. Because our charter is very specific as to what uh, warrants forfeiture of office. And it's 
basically, if you no longer qualify to serve because you don't live in your you know, ward anymore, or if you violate a provision of the charter. Um, so now in statutory cities, removal is for cause, which is a very broad concept uh, and is adaptable to situations. Um, there's some case law regarding a former mayor of Maryland Heights 30 years ago who was removed because he refused to, in part, because he removed, refused to reveal to the city attorney what he was gonna to testify to as mayor in a lawsuit against the city. Um, so, and that was part and parcel subject to uh, the reason he was impeached. Um, but our charter is very specific and limiting in, in, in its language in terms of how uh, the basis for impeachment. So that would require a charter amendment. So theoretically, I could um, embezzle money, uh, go through the justice system, and then um, still still be a sitting. Well, no, not necessarily. <laughs> there is a there is a statute that says that if you are once you are sentenced for a felony, you forfeit your office. But that is not a. But that's not if you prior had you had a felony, right? So I could be sentenced for a felony, resign rather than essentially be fired by our, or our ordinance, run again, having embezzled. No, if you, are, if you are convicted of a felony, my recollection is you are not qualified to hold office. I thought there were some- changed that recently. I, I'd have to double check that, but- I thought there were some exceptions to that. Maybe there might I'm be sure. some exceptions, yes, but my ge the general, as I recall, and I, I can double check that, but that's- um, Slightly different issue. I should know that. I apologize. The only reason I went down that rabbit hole was to the point of if we were going to look at other charter amendments that we might want to roll language in together at the same time, if that was a recommendation of the city attorney. But that's only why I, I brought brought up that. And I, I should know the other off the top of my head. I, I just don't remember it because I don't think it doesn't apply to me on an everyday basis. That's right. Um, so I would like to see some recommendations um, for adding teeth and penalties uh, to, to violations. Okay, is that a motion on that, Council Member Edens? Sure, just a motion for our city attorney to, to draft a, a, a recommendation of, of, of penalties and ordinance form. All right, is there a second on the motion? Council Member Remy? All right, motion on the floor. All right, no discussion. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstain? All right, motion passes. Uh, Council Member Rambo, did you have your hand up or did I see someone else with a hand up? Uh, no, I, I did not, but I would like to um, uh, ask that um, Attorney Young consider um, uh, if we're if we're going to you know go to the trouble of changing the charter. I, I don't know how the pro I don't want to dictate the process. No, don't know how to dictate the process, but I think if we're going to do it, um, Council Member Brost said. Um, that um, we should look at, um, you know, changing the charter several ways or whatever, you know, bring it up to um, what we need it to be all at the same time. So when the time is right, I don't know how to, uh, how to start that process, but I wanted to throw that out on the table. That's all. So you're turning on? Mr. Chairman, what I can do is, is draft some alternative options, including charter amendments that you all can review uh, and then just pick and choose what you'd like. Um, awesome. Now, to, 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 I, I looked it up and to answer uh, council member Eden's question, uh, there is a statute that expressly states no person shall qualify as a candidate for elective public office in the state of Missouri who has been found guilty or pled guilty to a felony under the federal laws of the United States or to a felony under the laws of the state or an offense committed in another state that would consider it a felony in this state. So yeah, if you, are, if you have committed a felony, you do not qualify for public office, including council member. If you commit a felony while in office, you forfeit your office upon sentencing. All right, anything else? Land down, okay. All right, it sounds like there are no other items for discussion here. Uh, back to the agenda, then we are uh, done for all the administrative items. Anything under uh, miscellaneous? 
Council Member Farmer, is that your hand up for something, or is that? Just I was just going to make a motion to adjourn, but you tell me when you're ready for that. Um, I will give it to you in a second. <laughs> All right, next meeting February second, and uh, motion to adjourn made by Council Member Farmer. Is there a second on the motion by Council Member <laughs> Flasher? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposing abstain, motion passes. Thank you very much. Have a good evening. Thanks again. Thank